So at this time, I'd like to. Uh, <coughs> this is a meeting, a regularly scheduled meeting, Sunderland Select Board, December 5th, 2022. Jeff, I'd like to call to order at 632. First order of business tonight is the minutes from our November 28th meeting. I motion we approve the minutes of November 28th. Seconded. Okay, we have a mo motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of November 28th. Any discussion? Here are no discussions. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. On the next order of business is we have under new business a <coughs> dangerous slash nuisance dog hearing and this is a judiciary hearing um so the first thing we need to do is call um the open the hearing so i will open the hearing and this is being held under mass general law chapter 140 section 157 and we have a hearing notice Jeff, we sent out the hearing notice, right? Yes. Okay. November 9th. And the hearing notice, we will... Oh, no. I lost it. Okay, so our clerk will read the hearing notice, please. Uh, Office of the Select Board, 2012 School Street, Sunderland, Mass, 01375, uh, November 9th, 2022. Um, dear Mrs. Liu, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157, the Sunderland Select Board will conduct a public hearing to determine whether a dog owned or kept by you in the town of Sunderland is a nuisance dog or dangerous dog, as those terms are defined in said statute. This notice is based on a report concerning incidents that occurred on October 25th, 2022, where your dog attacked and injured Mr. Michael Snydak, thank you, of 2 Chateau Road, Hadley. As a result of this complaint, you are hereby requested to appear before Sunderland Select Board on Monday, December 5th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m., at which time the board will consider these charges. At that time, you may be, you may be present, I'm sorry, you may present any documents or witnesses that you may have relative to these charges. You may represent, you, you may be represented by counsel at your own expense. You can appear in person at Sunderland Town Office Building, 12 School Street, or remote participation at address, or by calling 929-205-6099 and entering meeting ID 612-780-253. You are further advised if these charges are proven, the select board may take such order concerning the restraint or disposal of the dog as may be deemed necessary, which may include an order that the dog be humanely euthanized. Sincerely, Jeffrey Kravitz, Town Administrator. Thank you, Nathaniel. Okay, just just a couple ground rules so everybody knows knows what's happening. Okay. Uh, what was that, Jeff? Uh, wasn't me. Uh, if if you're not talking, please mute yourself. If you're on on the Zoom. Uh, for those on the phone, star six to mute and unmute. All right. So so this is this is. Um, a uh, dog hearing procedure is governed by, governed by uh, mass general mass general law. Um, we open we open the hearing. Uh, we read read the uh, notices that was published. First thing we do have some ground rules. Okay. One one thing is hearing sometimes can become uh, emotional. Unfortunately, we don't allow emotions to. Uh, interfere with the, the t gathering of information. I'd ask whoever would like to speak, you address the board, myself, Crystal, and Nathaniel, um, and that even if you're sitting next to the person, um, please do not turn to that person and address that person directly. You have to address everything to us so that we're tr we try to maintain the uh, civility. We will also ask you if you do want to <clears throat> uh, enter testimony. We're going to ask you to uh, uh, to affirm your oath. An oath. We'll give you the oath. 
um, that will ask you to affirm um, that you will be telling you will be telling the uh, truth. The, the biggest one of the biggest things is that we only can allow one person to speak. That person to, that's going to speak has to be recognized by the chair, which in this case is myself. So unless I have recognized you, um, we are not really, we just can't start talking. You have to ask or you have to be recognized by the chair. So if you're on Zoom, you will uh, raise a hand on the Zoom. Uh, or if you're in here, just raise your hand and I, I'll, I'll recognize you when, when we're ready. <clears throat> when, when we're ready, ready. I just want to remind everybody that civility um, the other side of the river yells at one another. This side of the river, we don't. So, um, don't don't tell them on that side of the river. But we've said that before. Because they're not going to watch this, right? Well, they may. But um, so so basically, um, it, it, again, we understand it can be an emotional an emotional thing. Um, we're, we're your neighbors. Um, you're talking about your neighbors. You're dealing with your neighbors, and we just. Mm -hmm. We just want to get as much information so that we can make. No arguments. Um, we are recording a couple of different locations. You're recording here, and we have FCAP is recording also, and then the uh, the local newspaper is also recording. But I can't tell you how accurate that recording will be. Dominic. All right. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Without hearing any questions, <coughs> this is how we this is where we proceed. Open the hearing. The complainant will testify first. The complainant witnesses will witness or witnesses will then testify. The board will question complainant and the complainant witnesses at that point. When that, the complainant, then the dog owner and or representative can question the complainant and any witnesses after we ask questions first. When all the questions of the complainant have been addressed, the dog owner will testify, the dog owner's witnesses will testify, the board will question the owner and the owner's witnesses, the complainant can then question the owner and owner's witnesses, and at that point, we can we can close um, that portion of the hearing. At that point, we then enter into deliberations, and we decide. The first thing is we have the first thing is that we decide is is if the dog in question is of uh, What's a, is it vicious or uh, a nuisance or a dangerous animal? So though that's our first that's our first decisions, and then based on that decision, then we go the next step after that. Any questions about the procedure? I have a question. Shoot. Um, I understand victim slash complainant, but when would members of the public get a chance to speak? Like, maybe not the person who was actually injured, but a neighbor or somebody who, you know, maybe has come across this animal in another Well, that, aspect that, of that it. would be, if, if the person has specific information about the dog, that would be under the under complaint. Under the complaint. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Greg, would you, would you uh, affirm that? Um, yes, um, good evening. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I did also just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Greg Corbo. I am a uh, town council for the town of Sunderland, and uh, I'm here and, and available to provide any assistance um, that you may wish um, to have with me, either um, by answering questions you may have, um, or uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I might um, you know, want to interject and ask questions of witnesses that might help you um, reach your decision. Um, in terms of allowing members of the public to speak, I, I would agree with your assessment that um, if there are members of the public who wish to speak 
sort of in opposition to the dog or in favor of finding the dog a nuisance or a danger, then they can speak during the complainant's part of the presentation. Um, if, however, they wish to speak in favor of the dog or in favor of not finding it a nuisance or a danger, then um, they can speak during the, the second part and the, um, the dog owner's presentation. It's really up to you um, how you might want to proceed there. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> um, and as Jeff, because, because it's being, we have people on Zoom, we have people here, um, and we are recording a couple different median um, I, I would ask if you are to speak that you um, state your name and your and your address. Okay. Any questions? Okay. At this point, um, the hearing is open. Uh, the complainant. We will take your testimony first. Um, if you could stand, we can uh, swear you in. One at a time, please. All right, uh, state your name, please. My name is Paul Snydak. Paul? I'm the son of, uh, the, of the victim. Okay. Uh, I live in East Hampton, uh, 20, uh, 20 uh, Terrace View in East Hampton. My parents live at Two Shattuck Road. Okay. And, uh, Paul, do you, at this time, I'll, I'll, I'll swear you in, okay? Yes, sir. So if you could raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing tonight? I do. Thank you, Paul. Thank All right. You. So if you could begin. Uh, thank you, folks. Uh, I don't want to do this. Uh, so why, um, why don't you come, you can come right up here, Paul. You, it, it'd be easier. Just come right up here and sit next up, Chief, if you would, please. Sure. Okay. Sorry. That, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. It just gets you. No problem. No problem. Thank you. I, that way you don't have to. Stay standing. So on October 25th, I was at my parents' house. Uh, I normally do my parents' bills and everything, and uh, um, I helped my parents out with you know little oddities here and there. Well, my father ended up taking a walk over to the uh, the, the house, uh, Shin's house, with the uh, he had a ham bone that he normally my father and Shin have a, a relationship where you know they come over and they you know like he. She had other dogs and everything that, you know, he'll, the dogs would come to the house and he'd feed the dogs and everything, or he'd go over and drop some, you know, like leftover meat and stuff. So my father actually this time brought a ham bone to the house and he basically went in, dropped the uh, ham bone for the dog. The dog started to chew on it and then like playfully threw it back at him. And so he picked it up, threw it back at the dog and the dog started to chew on it. And then my father was like, okay, I'm ready to leave. He turned to leave and the dog jumped up on top of him and actually bit his arm. And he, my father basically you know, was trying to fight the dog off. And when the dog jumped again, basically scratched his eye above his eye, which we have photos of. And my dad's initial uh, reaction is to bring his arms up to try to protect himself from the dog bites. The dog chewed up his arms pretty bad, um, and at this time when this when this happened, this uh, incident happened, I didn't know anything that was what was going on, and so my father comes running into that house. Eventually, and it's like I'm bleeding, and I'm like, you know, thinking, you know, all right, so you got to cut, you know, no big deal, you know. He's like, no, let's go, we got to go to the hospital. So I get outside, and I'm like looking for my father because I'm going to drive my vehicle. And he comes around from the front of the house, and the lacerations, just blood just pouring off of his arms, uh, bleeding profusely. I call 911, and I'm on the phone with 911, and I'm trying to explain to them you know, what's going on. I mean, my father, uh, if they had the recordings, he, he, was, he was swearing profusely, because he's thinking he's dying. And you know, he's just bleeding out like crazy. So what I ended up doing was I grabbed a towel, ripped it up, tried to wrap it around his arms, I got him into my car. I told the lady, uh, the, um, the dispatch person, that I'm taking him from the house and I'm going towards the center of Hattie. And the lady, the lady was like, listen, don't, you know, I'm like, listen, my father, he's, he's bleeding profusely. I gotta at least try to get him closer to you guys and you guys can come here. 
I ended up getting to the end of Cummins Road, and I started turning to go on to 47, and the dispatch person was like, listen, don't, you know, we can't, you know, you shouldn't stop over on 47. And I'm like, listen, you know, I'm driving towards the new Hadley facility, can they meet us there? So they ended up, there. the ambulance and the police showed up there. I, I pull up, the, the, the fireman and everybody did an amazing job just grabbing him and getting him into the ambulance, getting him, you know, trying to get some of the, some of the bleeding to slow down a little bit, and they took him off to be state. And during that time, the Hadley police officers and I ended up going down to um, the South Plain Road, was, yeah, South Plain, and to, to, to determine, you know, where the dog was. So, and eventually, you know, we ended up talking, and eventually my sister, my sister met my father at the hospital at Bay State. And she took photos of the wounds that were his open wounds, and uh, it was just uh, it was just really crazy. Just you know, he was in the hospital until I believe until like ten or eleven at night. No, twelve. Until twelve. Sorry. And, and then uh, when he ended up coming, they sent him home, and for a week's worth, actually two weeks worth, we had to clean his wounds. So his wounds were were open. We actually had we had photos of everything. So and uh, we ended up having to wash them, wrap them up, keep them going, and he would just keep going back and forth to the doctors, you know, so many days, just so they could look at the wounds and everything to make sure everything was working out well. Um, and during this time, uh, Shin was you know always asking, "Oh, hey, can I come and see your dad? Can you know is he okay? You know, can I bring them anything?" And I basically was like, you know, just, I understand you're trying to do the good neighbor thing, just, you know, just let her lay down low kind of deal. She ended up eventually bringing some food over to my parents and basically just trying to talk my dad into uh, saying that the, the dog didn't mean to do it. And my, uh, my sister and I um, basically, uh, eventually a couple weeks later, she uh, had her son type up a, a form that's basically saying that my dad had a, a skin disease or a skin problem. That's why it wasn't the dog bites that uh, caused his, uh, his, his um, accident, that he had a skin problem. And it's like, no, those were bites. I mean, my sister has all the documentation of everything, so this way she can check it Okay. And that's basically it. That's all we're here now. I mean, is that it, Paul? That is it, sir. That's the best I can do. Is there, um, and, and again, so we're going to take all the testimony from the complainant witnesses before that we're, before we question. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to, to testify? My sister, Mary Jean. All right. You want to stand up? Chair. Yeah, Greg. Uh, hi, this is Greg Corbell. Uh, before we move on um, to the next witness, would you mind if I asked a couple questions? Sure. Sure. Um, thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Sidak. Um, I'm sorry I can't be there in person. No problem. Um, I just want, wanted to have a few clarifying questions. Um, first of all, is your um, father present this evening and available to testify? No, he's home sick. Okay. Um, so, um, is it your understanding that the, the property where the dog was kept, um, was the dog kept within a fenced-in area with a gate? Uh, I believe they, uh, the dog was. Um, my father, see the thing is, they, they've had a history of where my father would always be you know, going in and feeding the dogs and stuff like that because you know, Shin would always let her dogs run around all the time before. And this dog here, you know, she had, you know, had him in, in, in the yard. And my father would have a history of going over and visiting her and visiting the dog. And the, the situation for the dog to attack my dad, it, it's, as far as I know, it's, it's, it's not normal. Normally, the dog is usually, was usually pretty good to my dad. Okay, and so, um, is it your understanding then that your father would have been invited to go um, into the gated area where the dog was kept? Can you repeat that? 
Yes. Um, is it your understanding that your father had an invitation to go into the gated area where the dog was kept? Well, the, the, see, the thing is, uh, their friendship is basically, they were always at an open inv invite. So the, the, between Shin and my father, Shin would always end up at, at our parents' house, you know, walking around in the yard and stuff with her dog and stuff, and vice versa. My dad would go over and he would, you know, bring uh, food scraps and things like that to the dog. So, they, and they've been doing that for years. So, Greg, can I just follow up with that question? Yes. Um, Paul, so when your dad went over, um, was the the the, uh, the owner of the dogs present when he was there? Not no. No. And and so when they were visiting other times, uh, and, and there's been plenty of times he's gone over there without her being there, and he would feed the dog. Okay. It's been it's basically it's been like natural history for them to be. Born. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Greg, you have any questions? Um, yes, I have one more. Um, maybe a couple questions on one issue. So you mentioned the statement um, that um, the, the owner's son gave to your father. Um, do, you, do we have a copy of that statement? We can. That's this one, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have that in our packet. Do you, do you want me to pull it up, Greg? Um, yeah, that, that might be helpful. I'll have it show up my hands on it here. Yeah, that's the same one we have. Yeah. Thank you. Can you give um, Mr. Sidek a, a copy to look at? <coughs> can you can you see it on the screen, yeah. Paul? Paul, you should, Paul, yeah. you should probably could see it right there on the yeah. screen. Yes. Is that the same? Um, so, um, Mr. Sidek, can you see this? Yeah. Okay. So, is, is it your um, testimony that? that paragraph three is not correct. Yeah, she was not home. No. She, no. Was, at, she was at work. No, paragraph three, no. oh, line paragraph number three. says I have a oh. medical. Yeah, no, that is not true. Yeah, my father does not have any skin medical condition whatsoever. And, and was it, when your father talked to you about what happened with regard to um, paragraph six, um, did he describe it as the dog accidentally scratching his arms and hands? No. No, the dog literally jumped up on top of him. When, when I talked with my father that when it happened, because I tried to, as soon as it happened and we were driving, I actually was yelling at my father to, act, to tell me exactly what happened. And his exact words were, he went and threw the ham bone the second time when the dog jumped up and bit his arm. And then when he jumped up again, he scratched his face and he basically brought his arms up to protect himself. And that's when the dog attacked him again. And um, with regard to paragraph seven, is it correct that the bleeding was, was a result of a medical condition? No, my father, uh, let's put it this way. My father has my father has cancer. My father has high blood pressure. My father does not have any skin diseases that will cause his skin to break. And um, so I mean, were, you, were you aware of this document being presented to your father for signature? I, I got this document way after and I told him not to sign this. So. Um, do you know why he did sign it? Yeah, I know him. The reason he signed it is because he he doesn't want her her feelings. And trust me, 
when I find out, when I get home, I'm going to have a nice little chat with him about that. We told him not to sign it. Can you keep going? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Syde. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't have any further questions. Us because we have a signed letter here. It um, so it's my, my understanding that, that we do have a complaint um, from from Mr. Sidek. Uh, the statute does not require that that the victim um, be the person who actually makes the complaint. Okay. I, I do have a question. How often would you say that your father had been there to visit the dog? On a weekly basis, on a oh, monthly like, basis. It's like every other day. Every other day. Yes. And and this particular dog, I know in here it states a puppy. Yeah, he's a puppy. He's a big puppy. But he's so a year and a half old. A year and a half. So for for rough for at least a year, your father has seen this dog yes. two, three times a week. Uh, several times, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is that Paul? Uh, thank you, folks. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, before we move on to a, a new witness, if you're ready for that, um, we should ask if um, uh, Mr. Um, Sai has any um, questions for the witness. Okay. Well, hi, thank you very much for the opportunity. I was uh, hoping to ask a couple of things as I've already done. Is it possible to uh, is it possible to switch the view back from the uh, statement so that I can see Mr. Mr. Yeah. And uh, he seems to be uh, off camera. I, I, I apologize. The Zoom format is a little bit difficult to work with. But uh, all right, so I, I, I think you'll see him in the back there. So that's uh, that's fine. Maybe Once he fine. speaks, the camera will zoom to him. So, Mr. Saida, uh, is your father, uh, to your knowledge, is he incompetent? Mentally incompetent? No, he's not. Is he suffering from dementia, from uh, no. Alzheimer's, any kind of mental incapacity? No. Do you have any reason to believe that he is not capable of understanding uh, a written statement which is presented to him? What? Can you repeat that again, please? That last part. Do you have any reason to believe he is not capable of understanding a written statement which is presented to him? No, he understands. Trust me, my father, he, he understands. It's the, my father doesn't want to hurt anybody's feeling kind of, he's that type of person who doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. The thing is, he, my father doesn't want to see the dog get destroyed. He would rather see the dog be taken away and given to some place that the person can actually uh, deal with the dog like on a farm, an actual farm away from people. Um, but the thing is, he understands that, you know, if, the, if, they, if that's not the option, he understands that the dog needs to be euthanized. You know, so that's, the, that, that's where my father stands. My father's got a big kind heart. He's just, he thinks with his heart more than he thinks, you know, logically. So, so my father's not incompetent, it's just, He's foolish when it comes to animals. He likes animals. Just, just that. Your father is aware we are having a, a hearing. Yes, he is. He does. And if he had the, uh, if he had a dispute over the contents of the statement which he signed, uh, would he uh, be able to come in person to dispute it? Would he be able to come and dispute it? Yeah. Okay. And he is not here today. No, he's not. He's homesick. All right, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. All set? Thank you. All right. Next. Excuse <coughs> <coughs> you state your name, please. Um, Mary King. I am Michael Snydeck's daughter. I met him at Bay State Medical. Um, he's in the emergency room. Bandage. I gotta swear you in. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, right hand raise, if you could, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, 
the whole truth during this during tonight's <coughs> during the hearing tonight. Yes. Thank you. You're Go. Um, like I said, I was at Bay State. Um, my brother called me to tell me that he was going there. I went there to see because I didn't want him to be by himself. Um, so my father doesn't understand medical jargon like I do. So I went there and to help him with anything that he didn't understand for medical terms and stuff like that. So I went there. He was bandaged up. He was in a lot of pain. They were giving him morphine. And I wanted to see his bandages because he had blood everywhere. I mean, all over his clothing and everything. And I said to them, I'm like, can you take the bandages off? Because I wanted to see. My main concern was the artery, the superficial artery right there on the arm. Um, if the dog would have ripped into that, he would have bled out in three minutes. Because I work in dialysis, and that's what we hook up for our patients for dialysis. So that's when I walked in. They're bandaged up really good, so I was nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I have photos. I don't know if anybody has a strong stomach or not, but I don't know if you wanted to see them. Whenever you want, you can take a breath, okay? okay. Just be relaxed, all right? I'm just nervous. <laughs> I know, but 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 we again we just we just want trying to get just trying to get the information. So take your take your time. Don't don't if you need to stop and take a second. That's fine. We have we we have time. Okay. So I went in and um, this is what he looked like. It was when his I seen his eyes, and then they were cleaning him up. To give them, they were giving him injections so they can clean the wounds to make sure that the dog bites. Um, they kept giving him morphine for the pain so he could um, get the wounds cleaned with soap and water and then stitched. This one was the one that I was nervous about the most. Right here is that um, superficial artery I was talking about. I was nervous. On um, both arms, the dog missed it. And he would have bled out in three minutes if the dog would have gotten hold of that. And this arm too, he missed it, which I was very grateful for. As you can see, <clears throat> there we go. He put his arms up for defending himself. This is it after they cleaned them up, before they stitched them up. They were trying to get as much flesh as they could to get it together before they stitched it up. Um, we didn't leave there until almost midnight. And then I went to a 24 hour CVS to get his antibiotics because he doesn't have a spleen. Because when he had cancer, they removed it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure he didn't miss a beat because I didn't want him to have an infection. So. Jeff, do you have a copy of those pictures? Yes. Okay. Are they the ones that are in our file? Yes. <coughs> They're the same um, ones. Yep. My brother and I have been doing the, we're doing the wounds for two weeks straight. Um, we've been driving them back and forth to see the doctor. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to need hand surgery or not. Because they don't know if he has nerve damage or not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Greg, you have any questions? Um, yes, thank you for you, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening, ma'am. Um, just one question. Um, are you aware of any... ...showed in those photographs? No. My father, the only thing he ever had was high blood pressure, and he had 
he had cancer when I was eight. And it's been in remission. And um, were you aware of the fact that he signed that written statement that was shown earlier? No. I did not know he signed that. He told me he wasn't signing it. I think he did it because he wants to be cordial with everybody in the neighborhood, is what he told me. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. No further questions. Thank you, Greg. I actually do have one question. Obviously, you know your father's signature. You believe he did sign this? Yes. Yes, that's fine. Okay. All right. No, just curious. Yeah. No, that is. I know my father. He, right. He doesn't want to make waves. Nope. That's understandable. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, we are looking at his one, signature. One second. Uh, any other questions from the... Uh, Mr. Sy? Sorry, I'll Yes, uh... Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I missed the, uh, the witness's name. I'm sorry. Could you repeat the name for me? Mary King. Mary? Yes, hi, Mary. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Now, I just wanted to clarify. Did you at any, were you at any point uh, on the date of the incident? Were you present in the neighborhood? Were you in the neighborhood? Were you there in the neighborhood? No, I got out of work and I went right to the hospital. All right. Now, did Mr. Did you communicate with your father, Michael, regarding the internet at any point on that day? Did you talk with Dad about what happened? Yes, I did ask him. All right. Are you able to hear me? Yes. You just mumbled a little bit. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, did you communicate? Yes, I asked him what happened. Father? I asked him what happened. And did he indicate to you? Uh, anything that lead you to believe that the recounting of the event in the statement uh, which we are now discussing was incorrect? He told me that the dog attacked him. He said that the dog attacked him. Did you describe the manner in which the dog attacked him? He just told me that the dog attacked him in between the shots of morphine. So he was a little intense at the time. So I just didn't want to keep pushing because he was in a lot of institutions at that point. Now that, now that statement is signed on November 22nd, 2022, is that correct? It's, that's when it's dated, yes. All right. Uh, is, is it fair to say that by November 22, 2020, November 22nd, 2022, Mr. Snyder Act was in a more lucid state of mind? Um, he was taking oxycotton and morphine pills. So, I don't know. Do you have any reason to believe that he was in fact incapacitated or incompetent when he signed that statement? I, I don't know his, I don't know his train of thoughts on the medications he's on. And at the time, I don't know if he had taken a pain pill at the time. I don't know. I wasn't there at the time I was at work. I was there in the morning and then I left for work. So if he was in pain, he probably took a pain pill and stayed home. So if he signed the paper afterwards, I don't know. Did he recount to you the circumstances under which he signed that statement? He gave me the paper. That's how I have it. And, uh, and your testimony so indicated that he did not want to sign it? I don't understand how you got that copy when he gave me a copy. <coughs> <coughs> He gave you a copy of the statement which had not been signed? He gave me this one. And it's not signed. And it's not signed. He handed me it's this and it's not signed. It's the exact same one that you have signed. Did you do understanding that he, uh, he did not want to sign that particular statement? It was on the table. He gave it to me. He said, here, you take this. So I don't know how, unless you had another copy and had him sign it. I don't know. I, I don't know how he signed that paper. If I have the, the original. Is it possible that we might be able to review that document, members of the board? You can, you can review it. Please do. He handed this to me. I have... Is there any way we might be able to pull it up on the screen and come form another? 
Sure, one second. Let me just finish reading it and verifying that it's the same letter that we are looking at here, too. That's the one he said your mom gave. Yeah, that's the same same one word for word, and I'll come hold it in front of the... Okay. I knew that is, uh, I, I need his signature on that, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, that, that, that really... And there is the signature line with no signature on it. Mm, that's the one my father gave me. And is this... So is it your understanding that he has the opportunity to review that document before he signed it? We... He handed this to me and told me to hold on to it. So I don't understand how you got a copy of that one. Is it possible that he signed? a copy and give it to us? Um, may I speak? Go ahead, okay. um, See, the thing is, when my father received that, we looked over it and we even told him not to sign anything. Right. We actually, uh, we even forbid him to sign it because it, we were trying to explain to him that, you know, it, it's not right. It's not, you know, it's making him sound like he has a skin problem and this and that. And my father said, fine, he wasn't going to sign it. But if he ended up signing it, it, I don't know, you know, what's going on when, when he signed it. Because... This is the original we got. Because um, Shin would always come over to the house, even afterwards, and try talking to him and stuff. So I don't know if she said something to him and it was like, oh, you know, and had him just ask him to sign it. So, I mean, right now we're up in the air on that one because we don't even know why he signed it. Even after we, we talked with him, we sat down and told him. Okay. And my mother told him the same thing. That, so, and that's that's fine. We I understand. Yeah. So that's I don't know when he signed it. Okay. Has your father previously indicated to you that he wished to file a complaint? Excuse me? Has your father at any point in the past indicated to you that he wished to file yes, a complaint? Yes, my father said he was going to file a complaint. That's why we're here. Did he ever, did he ever indicate to you that he did not in fact wish to file a complaint? No. No, the thing was, see, my father thinks that he can try to save the dog from being euthanized. That's, that's my father's big biggest. He doesn't want to see some, a, a, young, a young dog being euthanized. But the thing was, we tried to explain to him, you know, like, if the dog doesn't get euthanized because of, of what happened with him, who's to say, you know, a, a month or a year from now, you know, the dog jumps over the fence and attacks the kid and kills the kid. Now, that's exactly why we were trying to tell my father. We tried to explain to him about it. And he, you know, after explaining it to him that way, he understood. You know, so that's why, you know, that's why we're shocked that he signed something. Even after you know we we talked with him about it. So. Okay. Thank you. Clarify. When did you have the conversation with him? When he received that paperwork, that, it was uh, almost a month ago. It was like the twenty third. That was the twenty third. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, member of the board, I understand that uh, a complaint. Uh, was received by the, uh, I believe, by the police officer, the police chief, if I'm not mistaken, on November 6th. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, the right. police call that up. That's the date I'm seeing on the original email. So, so your father dictated the, the email for you? Yes. I talked with my father. Uh, go ahead. I talked with my father and my mother, and when I was writing this out, 
they actually, you know, were telling me what to put in to make sure that, you know, to get, to get the letter going. So. Now this, uh, this email was, was sent on November 6th, 2022, is that correct? That is correct. Between November 6, 2022 and November 22nd, 2022, did Mr. Snyder ask your father indicate to you that he had changed his mind again? No. Uh, thank you, members of the board. I think uh, there's going to be additional uh, questioning that I think may be helpful if uh, we first hear the testimony of uh, the other individuals uh, involved in this hearing. So I would like to reserve, if possible, a, a second opportunity to question these witnesses. Greg, is that okay? Uh, that, that's up to you, Mr. Chair. We can um, we can see where things go from here. Um, in the meantime, I, I would suggest we move on to the next witness. I agree. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. It, at this time, uh, we are <clears throat> still taking witnesses that would side with a complainant. Are there, is there anyone else that would like to speak at this time? Um, Mr. Chair, before we move on to that, I, um, I would suggest if they're here, um, that we have testimony from uh, the police chief who authored a report, as well as from the animal control officer. Okay. Chief. Which one do you want to go first, me? Sure. All right, so we're going to have to stand up and raise that arm there, yeah. Mr. This isn't the first time we've done this. Nope. All right. Do you, do, you solemnly, <clears throat> do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing tonight? I do. Thank you, Eric. State your name for the, everyone. Yes. My name is Eric Dimitropoulos. I'm the police chief of the town of Sunderland. Thank you. Thank you. So <clears throat> on October 25th, uh, 2022, uh, we had received a report from the Hadley Police Department. Hadley Police um, were investigating an animal complaint, and when they went further during their investigation, they determined that the animal in question actually resided in Sunderland. So at that point, they contacted us, and uh, being the officer on duty, I went down to the uh, to the general area, found uh, the officers in question, and spoke to them. Uh, at that time, they determined that the uh, the victim, or well, they reported to me that the victim was a resident of Hadley, um, <clears throat> and was transported to Bay State for some severe injuries uh, upon his face, uh, head, face area, and his arms. Um, the officers and I were unable to make contact with the resident or the owner of the dog. We could see the dog from the, uh, the fence that we were standing at. Uh, from that location, I could not determine if the dog was I could see that there was a, a, a tether on the dog, but I couldn't see if it was attached to anything else. So we didn't want to go into the property uh, in case a dog did attack us. We stayed on the other side of the fence. Um, between the Hadley Police Department and the Sunderland Police and the dispatchers back and forth, we determined that the owner of the animal was at work. She works at one of the schools in Amherst. And they tried to reach the owner uh, that way because the phone numbers that we had uh, were unanswered. Uh, the victim's son, who called in the report, uh, was uh, uh, also on scene when I had arrived. <clears throat> and uh, according to the dispatch log from Hadley, they had dispatched the officers in the ambulance for an 81-year-old 81 male, multiple <coughs> bites from a dog. The RP, a reporting party, advised that the dog lives in Sunderland. The IP, which is uh, the involved party, which was the victim, was dropping uh, dog food off the location and dog attacked him. Um, at that point, I, I was unable to initially reach our ACL, and I spoke with the Franklin County Sheriff's Department. They advised me of the next steps for uh, quarantine and things of that nature, things that we've assisted with in the past, so I was familiar with that. Uh, I was then able to speak with the ACL, uh, ACL Martin regarding the incident. Uh, she is also the animal inspector, so it was uh, uh, able to uh, think that she would be issuing a 10-day quarantine as soon as possible. Uh, at approximately 4.40 that afternoon, I then went to uh, the victim's uh, home. He was not there, he was still in the hospital. I spoke with his son. His son had explained the situation as he did tonight. Um, <clears throat> uh, his son explained that 
when he, uh, the dad had arrived yelling and swearing that he had to go to the hospital. The son finally was able to see him. And according to the son, it stated that it looked like a scene from a horror movie. There was blood everywhere. Uh, at that point, uh, he informed me that they had some photos of the injuries. So they forwarded them uh, to the department email where we saved them for, uh, for the ACO and for the uh, hearing tonight. <clears throat> he stated that uh, he believed he already spoken with the dog owner. He stated that she had blood on the fence and that his dad knew not to get near the dog. At approximately 5.18 that night, a uh, dispatcher advised me that the owner of the dog had called the police department uh, to show the officer some evidence. Uh, so I traveled to the scene and met her there. Uh, while I was there, I took, photo, uh, took a photo of the dog from a distance. She did confirm that the dog was uh, tethered and uh, connected to the house in some way, whether it be the porch, the decking, or, or railing that the dog was attached. Um, we were able to see the blood spots and stains on the fencing, which were in the photos in your um, folder. Uh, the blood on the leaves, and then walked along the driveway, and the only time we could see blood is when we could see it on the leaves and not on the uh, black asphalt. We could only see it on the leaves. Um, got up to an area where I saw the container that the ambulance was in, but I didn't go any further. Um, spoke with the owner of the dog, advised her that the ACO would be by to issue a 10-day quarantine. Uh, she did ask some questions regarding the quarantine about whether or not she was allowed to have the dog inside, outside, if it was outside, uh, things of that nature. Um, I cleared from there and then went back to the station to finish the report and it updated ACO Martin. And that's uh, basically where we are at with the, uh, the reporting. Do you have any questions of me? So, just so everybody knows, if you heard the term ACO, <clears throat> it's Animal Control Officer. I do know the dog was over by the house, um, sitting on the driveway. And um, when you arrived, was, it, was there any um, signage or anything that says do not enter or anything of that nature? Beware of dog. Uh, you can look at the photos. I believe there was one sign at that time. I believe there was one sign, but I don't remember. I don't have it in the photo. And um, is the, the nature of the fence position that if you were there to say make like a, a delivery to the front door or to visit someone that you'd have to go into the gate to get to the front door or into the area where the dog is to get to the front door? Uh, it's a very long driveway. Uh, the fence is probably six or seven car lengths from the street, maybe a little bit more. Uh, when you open the gate, uh, the, the single gate or the fence for the cars, once you open that up, it's nothing but you um, 
chickens or hens and the dog before you get to the uh, the house. Okay. So, so if you were a visitor to the house or a delivery person, you would have to go into the same area where the dog is kept in order to get to the front door to make that delivery. Definitely. May I ask a question quickly? Um, given what you saw of the dog attached to the leash, does the dog have access to that front door with the slack it has on the leash at the time of? Um, you should have a photo of the dog when I was there at five o'clock that night. And that photo will show you that the, uh, there is no way to get to that door unless you go through the dog. Okay, that's, that's what yeah. I was asking, yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you that one? Okay. Yeah, that's 100% thing, yeah. Right. Anything else, Greg? Uh, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Howard, do you have questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, I, uh, Greg, I sent you uh, an email just uh, about an hour prior to this uh, hearing. Did you have any time to do that? Um, I'm sorry, is that, is that to me? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry to drop it on you last minute, but there were some photos that I thought would be helpful. And I, I think it might be a good time to have uh, speak to Metropolis to have a look at them. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, have, I don't have access to that at this time. <coughs> uh, is it possible that I might be able to share my screen? Uh, you should be able to. Uh, let, me, let me see what I can do. If you don't mind, just give me a few seconds. It looks like my microphone gets disabled because I didn't get a screen, but it looks like you do have it up there. Uh, Mr. Demetopoulos, uh, are you able to see this? Yes. All right. Uh, now, do you, do you recognize this particular view? It looks like the driveway. Sorry? Sorry. Yeah, so this is standing on the street. This is the gate uh, to the house. That's the house right there. So this is the driveway of our house. Well, it's fair to say this is an accurate reflection of the view from the street of the property. From the street, yes. Okay. Now I'm going to. Uh, I may have to pause this, so I may. Uh, I do apologize for this, but I think it's going to uh, give me again. Please one second. I'm going to quit the video. All right. Now, Mr. Metropolis, are you able to see this? I am. Now, uh, would you say this is an accurate uh, depiction of the view from the gate? On what day? Now or that day? Uh, either now or that day. On, 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 the, on the day you were there. On that day that I was there, that is not an accurate, accurate description of what I saw. All right. Uh, in, in what way is this uh, is the view inaccurate? Uh, I do not remember seeing no, uh, no trespassing dog on premises sign. I believe I do not remember seeing the no entry, absolutely no entry sign. And if there was a beware of the dog, I don't believe it was up here. I believe it was down on the ground at the bottom of the fence. Yeah. But there was, now you, you do recall there what is a yeah, beware of the dog sign on, on the I remember fence. a sign. I do believe it was a beware of the dog sign, but I believe it was down at the bottom of the fence. Um, but having that sign itself, well, I'm not going to get into that. The other two signs were not there. Okay. Now, could you indicate to us uh, in this photo, uh, would the dog, Lobo, have been, uh, was his location visible in this photo? So with this photo, yeah, if, with this photo sitting at this gate, the dog was in front of where that um, archway is at the top of the stairs. 
that bottom of the stairs, that uh, end of the driveway, to the right of the rear of that car is where the dogs were sitting when I got there. And you previously stated that uh, you observed that he was on a lead at the time. I could see okay. the lead. I didn't know where the lead went. I saw it was on his collar, but I didn't know if it was attached to anything. Do you have any reason to believe that the lead was not attached to anything? Well, at the time, I didn't know. Yeah. At the time, I did not know. When what I came up at 5.15, that's when I could see that the lead was attached to the building. Okay. And based on what you saw, uh, either at the time that you first arrived there or after you, uh, you came back later, uh, do you believe that there was enough slack or enough uh, reach on that lead to reach all the way up to the gate? To, to the gate, the fence? Yes, the fence. Yeah, uh, no, I, I did not believe that the, uh, if the lead was attached properly, that the person or the dog would not get to the, the fence. That wasn't my concern. My concern was if I got into the fence, at what part in the yard, if anything, would I have interaction with the dog? So that's why I stayed on this side. So it was, it was your belief that how long were you on that side of the fence that you would not be attacked by the dog, is that correct? If I was on this side of the fence, yes, because I had the fence blocking me. Thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Can we move on to the next witness, the animal control officer? Do you have any questions, Greg? Yeah. He also told me that when police responded, they ended up changing responses over to the North, uh, the North Hadley Fire Station to intercept the victim and bring them to the hospital. Um, at that point, that's when emergency services took him in the ambulance and brought him to the hospital and officers found out that the dog actually resided in <coughs> so they went to the scene um, and then the police chief met them there. Um, chief Dimitropoulos also let me know that he had spoken to uh, the owner of Lobo and that she was aware that he was going to be needing a quarantine, and so I followed up with her when I was able to get back in town, which was the following day. So I issued a quarantine notice to the dog at that time. I also discussed uh, the tethering at that point and just gave her some of the mass general law so she could read up on it and educate herself on it. Um, at that time, when I arrived, Lobo was off leash in his yard, I was on the other side of the fence. There was a sign that said, beware of the dog, but none of the other signs were posted at that time. Um, he did not bark at me. He approached, but then sat down. And then during our conversation, uh, he ended up just lying down and just staying there during the whole conversation. Um, and then I provided her the paperwork, and then I headed back. And then I ended up speaking to the son of the victim a, couple, a week and a half later um, after to check up to see how things were going, how his father was doing, and then asked if we could make a meet or like do a meeting together on the phone um, with his father. And so we arranged to do that via the phone. Um, and after the 10-day quarantine, I did release the dog since he had not shown any symptoms of rabies. And so he was released from quarantine at that time. And then during our conversation with Paul and his father, Michael, um, we discussed the time of the incident. And I asked uh, Michael to walk me through what exactly happened. It seemed to be a little difficult for him to walk me exactly through things. There's a little bit of confusion, but the 
gist that I got was that he was bringing him over a ham bone. The dog saw him, then came over, and I believe it was jumped up on him, and he dropped he dropped the bone prior to the dog jumping up was how they told me. Um, and he, Lobo jumped up and bit him on the arm and he had fallen back and then was trying to push him off and then that's when he got the other arm wound. Um, and then he said he was able to get out of the fence in the area and he headed home. Did, Emmy, did he say how long, how long the attack was? No. He said he was having a hard time remembering like how long it really was. <coughs> Thank you. So was the dog quarantined on its, on its home property. on its own property? It, yeah. They don't go somewhere else for quarantine. Not unless it's requested by the owner or there's some other like bigger circumstance of like like an actual potential rabies and then pulled out of the house. So in this situation, no, it was at yeah. home quarantine. Nathaniel. Any questions? No, I read your report and everything you said just lines up with it. So, Greg. Um, yes, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening, Ms. Martin. Thank you for being here. Um, so, did you um, at, at the end of the ten-day quarantine, did you observe the dog again? Yes. In order to release the dog, you have to observe it, and he appeared normal and was in his previous functioning self. And um, you heard testimony um, from from the chief that at the time um, he went to the property after the incident that the dog was um, tethered uh, with some sort of um, chain or something to the house and that the owner was not home. Um, did you talk to the owner about um, the requirements of the law with respect to, to tethering dogs outside? I did. I gave a verbal warning. We discussed it. I provided her the Mass General Law um, paperwork for it so she was able to read it herself. Okay. And did she indicate to you that that was something that she did frequently? Um, she didn't indicate that, but I said that that's not a, that doesn't fall within the uh, state or the general law. You have only a certain amount of hours you can have a dog out on a tethered leash. Um, and so if it's past that, it's not okay. So I don't know exactly how long to how long it was that day, but it can't be more than five hours within a 24 hour period, I believe. Can I ask a quick question? Oh, I'm sorry, this is going to be kind of directed towards you, Chief. Um, do you have a general idea of how long after the dog attack before the victim, before the owner became aware of the situation and that then contacted you? That would give us a general idea of how long it was after the dog attack before she was even aware of the dog attack. Um, <clears throat> so at one point, I don't have a, an exact time frame on here, but if the call came in, my initial call came in around 2.50. Uh, Kathy's call came in just after 2. So the attack happened sometime before 2. We weren't notified because they didn't make it to our area until almost 3, so it had been at least an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, when I had gone down to the home again at 5.15 to speak with the owner, she had in, uh, explained to me that she had let the dog out before she went to work. So the dog had been put out prior to 8 a.m., the attack happened before 2 p.m. I got there before 3 p.m. and then I was back there again at 5.15 upon her request and she was out there with the dog. And that was, she came home, saw the blood, contacted you. It would be safe to say that she got home in the four to five o'clock hour. Would that be? Between, yeah, between 3.30 and 4.30 I think is when she got home. Okay. I don't know if she got the messages from Hadley or from my dispatch or someone actually spoke with her, but she did find out that uh, the situation didn't happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, and just out of curiosity, what is the length of time the Massachusetts General Law allows for a dog to be left outside? I believe it's five hours within a 24-hour period. Okay. 
Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I ask a couple more one questions? Second, one second, Greg. Pardon? One second, Thank Greg. Um, if she's a school teacher and she tethers them up outside and leaves them there all day, is that, that's against the law. We're just taking testimony right now, so that's, yeah. We, we can address that later, okay? All right, Greg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Ms. Martin, um, when you spoke with, um, with the dog owner, um, what was her response to hearing the, the news that her dog had bitten um, this gentleman? Uh, she was very distraught and concerned about his well-being and wanted to know if I had heard any uh, updates, which I had not at the time. Um, did she offer any explanation as to what may have caused the dog to act this way? Um, she said that it is a known thing that uh, Mr. Sorry, I'm gonna say My Michael, sorry. Can't remember those, Snydak. how to pronounce it. Snydak. Mr. Snydak um, is known to drop by and uh, give the dog food, but usually she's there on premises at those times. And then when he does drop by to do that, she doesn't actually let him feed it to him, is what she said. She said that she just tells him to drop it and then like she gives it to him at a later time. Um, did she indicate at all to you that she, um, that she knew that, that the dog might have a tendency to bite someone? Uh, no, she did not. Oh, oh boy. Um, and um, did she indicate to you why she had the beware of dog sign on the gate? Uh, no, she did not. Um, and when, when you spoke with um, Mr. Sidek, did he um, indicate to you that, that he had any um, predisposition or illness that would have um, caused him to bleed from a, a minor injury? Uh, no, he did not. And did he suggest to you that, that this was not a bite, but, but merely a scratch? No, he did not. Um, and um, do you have any um, prior incidents or, or complaints involving this dog? I have multiple complaints about the dog previously to like a year ago was getting out frequently. Um, the owner had then put up an electric fence and then I hadn't been getting any more reports of that uh, type of incident. But then there was reports of barking going on at all hours of the night. I had responded out a few times at night and didn't hear anything or was un unable to locate a noise that was barking. Um, but I did get multiple complaints from neighbors in regards to a dog barking in the general area of 30 South Plain Road. Yes. Um, and um, subsequent to this incident, um, have you had any um, complaints about this dog? Subsequent to the biting, the dog yes. bite? No. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no further questions. Howard. Thank you for coming, Ms. Martin. Your, uh, your participation in this is very much appreciated. Now, uh, you indicated that you had, uh, and I'm sorry, my uh, video doesn't seem to be going, Ms. Martin. It's awful to get it back over there. So hard for me to talk somewhere, I can't see. You have to say something, Amy. Just oh, sorry, <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, sorry. Uh, I know my, uh, my face on the screen behind you, I apologize for that. Oh, so uh, no, you, you previously indicated that uh, you had in fact uh, visited our property uh, shortly after the incident, is that correct? Yes. And you observed Lobo at that time? Yes, I did. And you described him as, uh, you said that he had approached you and uh, he then uh, calmly lay down, is that correct? He approached the general area of the fence and Shun gave the command of sit. And he sat down and then laid down on his own while we were having a conversation, yes. Okay, now you are the animal control operator for the town of Zambada, is that correct? Yes. And you are familiar with uh, what might be considered a sign of aggression in a dog? Uh, yes. 
uh, did you observe any such signs of regression in Lobo at that time? At that time, no, I did not. Did he growl at you? He did not. Did he uh, lunge at you? He did not. Did he bare his teeth? He did not. Did he do anything which might indicate to you that uh, there was a cause for concern? At that time, no, he did not, not during our interaction. And, you, and then you observed him again uh, several days later at the end of the quarantine, is that correct? Yes. And during that time, did he, did he indicate to you uh, any signs of aggression? Not at that time, no. Thank you. Now, you also indicated that uh, you did observe the gate and the fence in front of the property, is that correct? I observed the gate and there was a beware sign on it, yes. There was at least one beware of the dog sign on that fence. Yes. I don't know the exact location recall. of it, though. <coughs> uh, but it was conspicuous? No, not that I believe. You don't believe the sign was conspicuous? It was, the sign was ambiguous. Like, oh, conspicuous. You were able to see it? Yes, I was able to see it. Now, you indicated that you spoke with Mr. Sayadat uh, following the incident. Is that correct, Mr. Michael Sayadat? That is correct, yes. Uh, was anybody else present during that conversation? Yes, his son Paul was also on the phone call. Okay. And Mr. Michael Snyder described the incident to you, is that correct? Yes, he did. And he indicated that Lobo had uh, jumped up to him and uh, bitten him, is that correct? That's correct. And that he had been injured while pushing Lobo away, is that correct? That's correct. Did he indicate to you uh, that Lobo had displayed any signs of aggression? No, he did not say anything. He said that Lobo was laying in the grass and when he walked into the fence, he came over and approached him nicely. And then he threw the bone and that's when Lobo jumped up and bit him. And then he subsequently fell and he would try to push him off. Did, did, Mr., did Mr. Michael Snyder indicate to you that he wished to file a complaint regarding the internet? Um, it was very, his son was talking and wished to file a complaint. And the father stated that he was not wanting to, but understood it was probably the, in the best interest. But he did indicate that he did not want to file a complaint, is that correct? It seemed to be that way. Okay. Now, uh, I believe in your report, and uh, we can pull that up if necessary, but uh, actually, yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, Greg, we can pull up, pull up the report by Ms. Martin. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm being a, uh, I'm, I'm being a blank screen with nothing but a phone number here. Yeah, just a sec. <coughs> the possible we can pull up the uh, report by your mind? Yep, I'm pulling it up right now. Wait, okay, thank okay. <coughs> Now, if we could, uh, now first of all, Ms. Martin, do you recognize this report? Um, so far, yes. And now, are you, are you are you the individual who drafted this report? Yes, I did draft this report. All right, and uh, the possible we could uh, scroll down a little bit towards the end. Okay, yeah. Now you indicated. Now in this, at the the, uh, the, the last uh, substantive paragraph, you indicated that you had spoken with Mr. Snydak regarding filing of a complaint. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And you, and you wrote that he clearly stated during the conversation he was not looking to, to move forward with a complaint, is that correct? That was what it was stated, yes. And it was Mr. Paul Snyder uh, who wanted to file the complaint, is that correct? That is correct. Had, now, had Mr. Michael Snyder ever reached out to you to indicate that he had changed his mind? He had not directly contacted me, no. Okay. Just, uh, now I do, uh, I do want to indicate, I, I do want to point out just uh, without editorializing too much that uh, this, this does not appear to be the subject of the, uh, the hearing, but uh, I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, you indicated that uh, you had previously received other complaints 
uh, regarding a uh, local, is that correct? That is correct. And uh, you indicated that there were several occasions where uh, he would wander around the neighborhood? That is correct. Did anybody ever report uh, having been attacked by him? Um, there was a report from a neighbor who said that he came over to her while I believe it was walking or possibly in their front yard and came towards her and her animals kind of aggressively. That was me. Uh, did, did he describe the manner in which uh, he did so? Um, I don't recall the details at this point right now. I did, and did you, did you investigate that complaint? I went and I discussed it with the owner and stated that he needed to be on leash while off property at all times and that he needed to stay and remain behind the property line with either a fence or however she was able to do so. <coughs> so any type of electric fence or whatever she was able to do, as long as the dog and remained you, on his property. And are you understanding that he did in fact uh, take measures to prevent that from happening again? I did, I discussed it with the owner. Great. Thank you very much, no further questions. So, I'm just gonna say, <coughs> I could just a second I, I I truly appreciate that everyone is here tonight and it may seem like a long drawn-out affair but it's an, it's very important that we get as much information as possible so that we can use the information that we hear to make a just decision so I, I just want everyone to know that the three members of the board are very, very appreciative of you because now, you know, it's 8 o'clock. We've been here an hour and a half. Um, we just want you to know that we appreciate that you you spent your time, but not, not only us, but the, uh, the Schneidick family and also the family of Lobo. So, I, again, thank you for coming, um, and we'll continue at this point. Okay? <laughs> um, so at this time, uh, we've heard from the chief. I mean, good. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else that would like to speak as a witness of the complainant? Okay. So just just remember once once. Once this offer goes out there, it doesn't come back again. So if you want to say something, now's the time that you want to say. Okay? I am the owner uh, of Lobo, Xinfen Chai, Xinfen Luo. Do I need to speak? No, yes. Not at this. She's Lobo's owner. She's the dog's owner. Hmm? It's a dog's owner. owner. Oh, you, you'll get a chance, yes, but not, not yet, almost. Not this time, sorry, yes. Yeah, it's not yet. Um, is there any, anybody that's here want to take a quick five-minute break? Five-minute break? Yes. All right, so we're going to take, we, we, I'm serious, we will, we're going to come back, we're, we're going to take a short recess, we'll be back here at uh, 801, 802, okay? Okay, take a quick, take a quick break. So at this point, uh, I think before we uh, will bring us back into session, Jeff, at uh, 8.05, um, as I had asked, is there anyone else that would like to testify as to the complainant's concern? Yes. Okay, if you could uh, stand up, state your name. Um, I'm Kim LeClaire. I'm on 37 South Plains, so I live across from her. And now I'm going to hit you with, do you saw... Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing this evening? I do. Thank you. Um, I'm basically um, stating that I have made multiple complaints uh, within the last year to our animal control officer regarding uh, incessant barking of the dog at all hours at night. It could be 11 o'clock, it could be 2 o'clock in the morning, it could be 4 o'clock in the morning. And it's not just a bark where the dog stops and you know barks and stops. It is incessant, continuous barking, a good seven minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. 
he will not he does not stop and it can be any hour of any time my complaints were because it was during the spring and summer we had our windows open and we literally could not sleep because the dog barks incessantly uh, several phone calls to the animal control officer said she would go and speak to the the owner and she said she did my um uh, the information that she has given to me is that it is a big dog, it's a big fluffy dog, it likes to be outside in all types of weather, and the barking, um, she's really sorry that we can hear it, but it's the, where the house is and the way the sound travels that it comes to us. Um, it's not, it, you would be up all night. Um, literally, it would stop and it would be two o'clock, three o'clock, and so then I made many calls to her with no avail, the dog still barked, um, and then I was told to call um, the police department at any time, which I did either two or three times, I don't remember those dates, but those were recorded, um, and basically said this is the issue, um, our town chief and the other officers, because if it was through dispatch, if it was South County, knew the, uh, the situation and just to pass it along and they would take care of it. Um, honestly, the only reason why when people have asked me why if they've heard of anything since this attack, but I have not called because we still hear the dog, but it's not as bad because it's winter and our windows are closed. Um, it's very frustrating when you can't even open up your windows in your own house to try to get some sleep and get air uh, when you're up all night because of hours. So that's... Thank you. Greg, any questions? Howard, or Greg? I, oh, sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, I have no questions. I just have one question before we move to the, the council. Um, I'm not asking you to be an expert in this, but in your estimation, would you say that the dog was inside or outside when the barking was happening? Outside. Okay, thank you. Howard? Hi, uh, I'm sorry, I missed the, uh, I missed the witness's name. Kim. 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 Yeah, thank you, Kim. Yes. So, so Kim, uh, where do you uh, where do you reside exactly? I live across the street from your mother. So you saw the uh, photos that were presented earlier today, did you? Yes, I see the fence all the time. Uh, I live right across the street. Okay. Now you are uh, so you're on the other side of the street from where that photo was taken. Yes. So you're even further from the house than uh, what we're not put photo we're taking? Yes, across the street. Now, you, you, you reported hearing dogs parking from that general direction, is that correct? Correct. And what leads you to believe that it is, in fact, a Lobo that is parking? Because the other two neighbors' dogs next to us are always in the house and don't bark, and I know that bark anywhere because I've seen the dog in the road barking, and it's a very distinctive bark. And you are aware of what there are other dogs in the neighborhood? Those dogs do not bark. I, I see that all the time and I can tell the difference. My neighbor's dogs would be louder right next to me. They are not. That dog is a little farther away, but you can still tell it's that dog across the street. Correct. What are you saying is you're able to distinguish dog from the sound of their barks? Because he's one of only two next to me that bark. How many houses would you say are in that neighborhood? I don't know. Maybe 10? 10? 10 in your immediate vicinity? Say it again. On the road, near me, there's, I don't know, on the road, there's 10 houses, I don't know, 12 houses on the road. And, and, uh, and uh, are you aware that the uh, our property adjoins uh, other houses uh, on the uh, street perpendicular to South Bay Road? Uh, sure. And uh, might those, uh, but the owners of those properties own dogs? That is your, that's the, yes I do. All those other dogs are small dogs, so you can tell the difference between the barks, a small bark and a bigger dog bark. Yes, so that's how we know at all hours that it's the way the wind blows and what you hear is actually coming straight across the street right across into that property. It's very distinguished on um, the area and the sound of where that um, barking comes from. I'm sorry, can I respond to this? 
Can I jump in and respond to this? Because I live in this neighborhood. Uh, my son doesn't. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I want to indicate that there are two big dogs right next right at 36 South Pendle at Stanley's old house. Mm -hmm. uh, it just right at next to my uh, window. They have two big dogs, which you don't know. They bark all the time. I even make, when, at the time when you make a uh, complaint, I actually make a recording and send it to Amy, the uh, dog officer. In the recording, you can see the dog barking and barking and barking in the background. And I have the uh, video face Lobo. Lobo was not barking. So I sent that video to, uh, to Amy. So you cannot just assume that it's my dog barking. And you did not know the new neighbor who come into right across, you are in 37. I believe uh, um, my is 30, then next door is 34. Then there is one, I think it's 36 or 38. That house has two big dogs um, and they have a gate. They, they spent uh, $10,000 made a, a chaining gate right outside. Those two dogs bark all the time. So you can assume, um, I can only tell you that. And, and I do have a video evidence, I send it to Amy. That was the last year when, when you guys keep saying it's my dog barking. Robert doesn't okay, bark. Yeah, thank you. So, so oh, Howard, okay. how, where there was another, Howard, excuse me. Um, can, can we, can, not, not to prolong or, sh you know, stop this, but can we agree that, that we're going to dis that you and Kim may disagree on, <clears throat> on that, but we understand that your point is that it was prop, you're a good chance it wasn't Lobo. Kim believes that it was. Is that, is, can we just, Move to our next, the next step, please. If that makes, if that makes sense, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. You, you're talking about Lobo, and and it may, it may have not been him barking, and I, I don't, I, I think Kim has her thoughts, and you have your thoughts, and I don't think we're really going to go. I don't, also don't think it's central to the the issue at hand, yeah. whether or not. I, I, I'm, I'm more, I, I, I really like to address the issue about uh, what what happened, Mr. Snydeck, right now. I do have one more. I, I, I do. I do. Uh, I do agree with that. I want to ask if uh, there are other complaints regarding uh, Lobo or the more general complaints that That's uh, fine. be addressed. <clears throat> That's good. Uh, so, I do have one more question for this witness, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, you live across the street from them. You see the gate all the time. Um, are you aware of, and maybe you aren't, and that's perfectly fine, are you aware of a point at which it went from being a one dog sign in front of the property to the three that was shown to us earlier? No, I don't go down her property. Okay. That, that's fine. I just wanted to. in the front of our house where I have skylights. Mm -hmm. So that's the noise comes from the front of my house. The dog is just talking about around the side of my house, and the noise does not come through there. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. All right. So, is there any? Is there any new? Is there any new testimony from um, any witnesses that would like to look at the complainant side, testify on the complainant side? Yes. I'm Janet Paul. I live at 25 South Plain Road. Uh, kind of die like. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing tonight? I do. Thank you. I'm Janet Paul. I live at 25 South Plain, uh, kind of diagonal from Shun. I was the person that talked to the animal control officer when. I was in my yard with my 20 pound mini schnauzer and Sean's dog came charging at us down the driveway. I picked up my dog. It's jumping up on my back. My other neighbor, uh, I was in her yard. So, so was, was the bigger dog jumping on you? Yes. Okay, thank you. In my property. Yeah. Uh, but this is not just a one time thing. This happens all the time. Um, 
Uh, another time I was in Amy's yard, it jumped up on me again. I picked up my dog. I don't know what this dog's gonna do. When Chun would be out, it would get away from her. When it came down my driveway, it broke free from her. She has no control over the dog. My concern is that it attacked somebody that it knew. Like, it, it doesn't know any of us when we're outside. That's a big concern. I have kids. I have a small son who's out with our dog in our yard. And, uh, you know, Mike is a nice guy. He would stop. You know, I'd be out. I'd walk the dog once or twice a day. How you doing? He'd stop. I mean, he's just friendly. He likes animals. So, again, you know, um, after I called Emmy and talked to her about what had happened, Shun saw me the next day and she said, oh, you don't have to talk to her. She's my friend. She's, you know, like kind of like you're just complaining for no reason. Um, it's very frustrating to, and the dog does bark all the time. Um, the list is long, I'm sure I'm not thinking of everything right now to be on the spot. It's kind of nerve-wracking to talk to everybody. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I can think of. So I, I do have, have a question. Interject, Are you fearful of the dog? Yes, and since it attacked Mike, and, and uh, I should say, she did put up an electric fence. It didn't break free after that happened. But since it attacked Mike, now Shun has decided to start walking the dog on the road again. And all the neighbors have seen her multiple times out with the dog. And when I saw her out with the dog, I picked mine up because I don't know what it's gonna do. So, and it, it was jumping and so. The younger yes. okay. uh, I question for you. Um, you said that you, you felt that the owner had a hard time controlling the dog. Yes. Um, I don't need exact numbers, but do you have a, a rough estimate of size difference between the dog and the owner? I haven't seen the two of them in a picture before. Yes. Shun is very petite, maybe 80, 90 pounds. She could ride the dog as a pony. It's very big. It's at least, what, 150 pounds, I would say. So it's your testimony that if the dog decided to get away from her, there was nothing that she would be able to do to stop that? Okay. But that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Yes. Can I also respond to this? Paul, we're gonna, we got to finish this line of question first, okay? Greg, do you have any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I have no questions. Howard, questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so I, th I think my mother doesn't want to speak. I'm sure, I'm sure she has a response. I do want to keep the hearing on track. I want to point out that what we're hearing is wildly speculative. He had not indicated that there was an attack, that there ever would be an attack. He had grossly mis misestimated the size of the dog. It's not 150 pounds, it's nowhere close. My mother is more than 90 pounds. so. Uh, I think the witness is not reliable. She keeps making it purely on speculation, and I'm sure my mother will also have the opportunity to add to that. So, uh, Mom, if you could please uh, keep it straight, I'm sure everybody is anxious to get on the journey. Okay. Um, I just want to mention that the dog chased uh, Janet. Janet's uh, small dog, that was last summer when he was just a puppy. I just had him for about two months. And since then, I set up the electric fence. I put up the fence, the, the wire fence. I hired the dog trainer. And Lobo stayed in the fence for almost the entire year, did not go out until recently. The dog trainer said he is ready to go out. So I began to take him out. And Janet, one, uh, since I took Lobo out, I run, we passed each other twice. It was small dog was barking and jumping at Lobo, but Lobo stayed next to me. Lobo did not bark, did not jump, did not do anything. I would just like to indicate this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Howard, Howard, do you know if uh, do you know if Lobo's intact and is he an intact male? I believe so. Yes. Thank but you. If, I, uh, if my knowledge is correct, I believe uh, Janet's dog is also male. Thank you.
Okay. Um, is there anyone else that would like to uh, offer testimony from the complainant side? Paul? Yes, yeah, sir. Um, I do have to say, you know, the, the paperwork that my father signed. See, my father is. Uh, Paul, we're, we're not going to go. We're not going to go back on that. Okay. It, it is what it is. So oh, okay. if, if you're going to continue, I'm going to have to ask you to, to stop. I okay. Didn't, I didn't know because I thought it was still. Yeah. Right, so. No. It. It. I. I. On, on for, we have no a paper. We we just dis, we discussed that. No we, right, I almost you. feel like Judge Judy right now. Thank but uh, <laughs> I, and like I said, I really don't. I and again. It, okay. Is there anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, Amy Halloran, 34 South Plain Road. I live directly in front of Shen's property. Okay. On the same side of the road. Amy, do you solemnly swear to affirm? to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing this evening? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> um, as far as barking goes, the other dogs that are in the neighborhood, and there are other dogs in the neighborhood. I have a 10-pound mini poodle. There's dogs uh, on one side of Shun's property. Um, there's dogs in, in the house in front of that, which is my other next door neighbor. Uh, which is Shun's rental. There's dogs all over the place. But they're not outside all night. It becomes very clear what the, what the bark of that white dog is when you listen to it night after night, over and over and over again for extended periods of time. <clears throat> it's so distinctive. It's a big dog bark. It's a big dog bark bellowing through a big field so you can't even literally have your windows open at my house. It's, it's, it's central AC all summer long because you're not going to sleep at all if you have a window open. It's just not going to happen. Um, and it doesn't happen just then. I mean, the dog barks when I pull in my driveway. Uh, maybe not long, a couple barks, but barks when I close my door. Barks in the summer if my kitchen window is open and I turn on my faucet. We know what this dog sounds like. I understand the neighbors have, have a concern about the barking, but this is not a subject that we complain. If, if, I, if I may ask, uh, we, uh, we, we shall take for later today and move on to 3822. Howard? Continue. Howard, I'm going to have to ask you to have patience. We, we, uh, we're asking for people to put their, you, want, you, you specifically want to know if other people had complaints. So this is just another complaint. So. This is another uh, a person that has a concern about the dog. So we'll just listen and we'll move on. So I just, I just want to clarify that when you hear the big dog barking, yes, there are other dogs, but that's the dog that keeps everybody up. That's the dog that barks when someone drives down, when someone walks, or jogs down the street, when someone's pulling a kid down the street in the wagon, when there's any sounds out there. That's its job. It's, an, it's a guard dog to alert. And it makes noise all the time. So it's, it's, it's difficult at best. Thank you. And that's, that's the barking end of it. Um, I've had, I, I have plenty of videos and pictures of most of the things that people have spoken about tonight because I'm the neighbor. Um, yeah, uh, my dog, my front lawn got torn up. It was March when the dog was running circles around you yes. in my yard, and yes. you're trying to keep the dog away from my dog, I mean, away from your dog. Mm -hmm. um, and it was wet. It was mu mel melty, muddy. It was early, you know, mud season. And that dog is running circles and it, digging up everything. Um, it, That, and so, yeah, the, it, and I'm just speaking of the dog. I am not addressing yeah. the guinea hens, the bird poop, the other issues. But it's, it's it, regarding barking and the dog being an out and about. And there was another bite, too. Uh, Judy Haskell, I believe, yes. at the end of our road, was bitten by this dog when it was younger. Because it, it was a puppy. It was a nipper and a jumper. It was real active, um, and it appeared that that continued and never had control of it. Uh, and then finally, the fence went up, 
And it was, that was good. That was comforting because we didn't see it out and about anymore. And we're not running home with our animals, trying to protect our animals. So that was a good thing. Um, and then it was quite disturbing to hear about the, um, the dog incident and your father. And then, um, and then to actually see her walking it on the street. I was like, kind of, like, I don't even know what to do anymore. I don't Greg, any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I have no questions. Howard, questions? No question. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Okay. Any other questions from or statements? All right. Last chance. Howard, at this time, uh, we're going to ask for the dog owner or representative um, to testify and if you whoever is going to speak I'll have to uh, ask to state your name and I will uh, swear you guys in also that won't be me thank you I won't get the first name back. okay so Howard do you uh, solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth the whole truth during the hearing this evening I do. thank you Howard I thank you members of the board uh, so We've been here quite a while. We've heard quite a bit of testimony from the complainant side. I think what we will gather, and I'm sure you will agree with me, is that at the end of the day, the facts of this, uh, this incident are actually mostly undisputed. So uh, I'll just sum this up for you very quickly. Again, we've been here for a long time, but this is, uh, as I understand it, this is what happened. On October 25th, 2022, uh, sometime during the day while my mother was out at work uh, and nobody else was home. Mr. Michael Steinadak, the alleged complainer, although again, I want to know he is not here. Uh, his son is here, Mr. Steinadak, <coughs> that he was about a complaint regarding the incident. Uh, in fact, uh, he came on that day to give a phone to the local. Um, the gesture is very much appreciated. Uh, we do appreciate his consideration. We understand of course he has good intentions in doing so. But uh, it is important to stress that Mr. Tyrak does understand that, if nothing else, Robo is a big dog, he's a puppy, he's very playful, he has the potential to get injured. Uh, perhaps you were not expecting to be injured as badly as he was, but uh, at the end of the day, he does understand that the, he should not be approaching the house uh, without my mother's presence. That's always been the arrangement. Uh, he knows that when Jin is not present, that he did not be approaching the house. He knows there is a gate. Regardless, he opened the gate anyway, went all the way down the driveway, specifically with the intent of giving a dog to Lobo. So he saw Lobo tethered up. He was uh, apparently sleeping, or uh, at minimum, he was relaxing. He tried to hand him a phone, and as I'm sure you are aware, anybody who has a dog, you can imagine how that dog might react when he's woken up and he's suddenly offered a phone. He gets excited. He jumps up, he wants to thank the person giving him the gift. He, again, it's a big dog, it's a bit of a puppy. He gets a little bit overexcited, and he may have wanted to see if Mr. Steinadak had anything else for him. He's going uh, around his arm, he may have chewed a little bit. Mr. Steinadak reacts, understandably so perhaps, tries to push no more off, and at that point it's injured. Now, I think he has very clearly figured that was in fact the case. I don't think anybody else here has stated anything to the contrary. So I think I think it's reasonably fair to assume that it in fact what happened. Now, if anybody was going to indicate that it was a, a mauling, a vicious dog, he was trying to kill him, he was trying to eat him, uh, he was uh, trying to take a bite out of his arm, uh, I'm sure Mr. Michael Tyadak himself would have said so at some point, and he would be here today to tell us that. He is not, he had been consistent, he was not attacked, it was an accident, he wanted to give the dog a bone, got, the dog got overexcited, and, uh, you know, I understand that the family wanted to dispute whether or not he has a medical condition, he always said that to us, that he's easily injured, maybe he doesn't want to characterize it as a medical condition per se, but uh, at the end of the day, he is an elderly man, he is easily injured. Now, that is, of course, why uh, we are always, have always advised him to exercise caution and other ones don't. Now, my family is here today. My mother is here, my brother is here. And I understand that some of our acquaintances
percentage is all over here. Now I understand reporting the interest of the board time that uh, you don't need to hear from every single one of them. I do appreciate their support. I do want to give them the opportunity to speak in support of Lobo. So what I will do is, of course, I will uh, give my own estimation of Lobo's behavior. I will, we, we've already talked about the security measures that are in place. I'll detail them into more, uh, into more detail. And I'll give you the opportunity to ask some questions, and then I would like to turn the floor over once you've had a chance to ask your question to uh, my friend in office. But first of all, so Lobo. Of course, we, until we've heard, Lobo's a big dog. Uh, just to clarify, there was some dispute to his size. He's actually 88 pounds. So he's, uh, he's on the larger side. He's not a massive dog. He's not a killer uh, pit bull. He's not trained to kill anything of that sort. He's, uh, he's a very friendly dog. He's a puppy. He likes to play with people. And I, I don't think you can imagine when a, a big puppy likes to play with people, things can happen. Now, I, I do want to emphasize, of course, that this is a very more dangerous dog. Uh, I believe at one point uh, there was maybe a slip, uh, there was a characterization, and maybe it was a vicious dog. But at the end of the day, not a vicious dog. I think we can, we, we can all agree about that. The definition of an attack, an attack has been thrown around uh, several times, but the definition of attack that it must be aggressive. And as you can see, there are no signs of aggression. Nobody has ever indicated that there were signs of aggression. So what we have seen is that Mr. Sidak came, tried to beat a dog, and he got overexcited. Now, Mr. Sidak has indicated to us that uh, it was a scratch. We did consult with him in drafting the statement. He actually had some revisions of his own. We have no reason to believe that the statement was uh, coerced or that he was somehow under the influence or otherwise that he came to regret that statement. And I'm sure, of course, if he did, he would be here to say so. Now, the dog jumps up. Again, uh, Mr. Thydak is elderly. He may or may not have medical conditions which make him prone to injury. He was apparently bitten. Probably not hard. We are aware of what level of life to kill. He was called Mouthy Dog. If you go on Google, uh, look up Mouthy Dog, you'll find tons of articles. You know, my puppy likes to kill things. He likes to kill my remote. He likes to kill my furniture. He likes to kill on me. But uh, at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's typical puppy behavior. Mr. Sidak may have re reacted and may have made the situation worse. He did, in fact, indicate that most of the injuries that he sustained actually happened when he was trying to push the whole way. Noble did not pursue him when he had pushed him off. He made his way back to the gate, uh, opened the gate again, as you can see, the closed on the gate. He made his way home, and he was transported to the hospital. But we regret what happened to him. But again, at the end of the day, it was an accident. He understands it was an accident. And that is why he had consistently maintained that he did not want to file a complaint. Now, again, I do also want to po point your attention to the manner in which Mr. Snydak came to be in our yard that day. Now, you've seen photographs of the driveway. Uh, I, I personally have not measured it. My understanding is it's probably at least 500 feet long, if not more. It's set very far back from the other houses. It was located in a way that I understand was formerly a field, an empty field behind the other houses. In order to access the house, you must drive your car down the driveway, get out of the car, open the multiple latches on the gate, push the gate open, get back in the car, drive the rest of the way in, a couple hundred more feet, Lobo will be lying there, get out, hand him a bone, and at that point, of course, at that point, uh, you could probably have a reasonable idea of what to expect. You are, in fact, of course, there to give the dog a home. Now, if you were to simply pass him by, this would not happen. As Mr. Snydak indicated, as his son has indicated, as everybody has indicated, Lobo only jumped up after he had been given the bone. So uh, I think any concern regarding having to potentially pass him in order to reach the front door, and I do want to emphasize that delivery is not to be made and left outside the gate. So there's no need for anybody to enter through the front door uh, unless they are invited. But uh, even if that were the case, uh, unless they were for some reason holding a bone in their hands, nothing would happen. Now, well, there's been some talk about the sign. There was a sign there. 
uh, Ms. Martin has indicated, and she does seem to recall this quite clearly, that it was clearly posted and that it was visible. So thank you very much for that, Ms. Martin. Now, out of, out of an abundance of caution, and again, I do, I do want to emphasize that the sign was already there, and that it was nonetheless bypassed. You know, the, the gate is not locked, we can't lock it. I think the general expectation is that the gate is closed, that people are not going to open it. But regardless, the, uh, we put up additional signs, we placed our contact information on the front gate to prevent any future reoccurrences. We've also uh, become aware of the tethering law. Uh, you know, we do obviously want to make sure no more has room to, you know, sit out in the sun, have, have a little bit of room to run around. We don't want to keep him lost in a pen forever. Uh, my understanding, of course, is that the tethering law is for the benefit of the dog. So uh, we are, of course, uh, aware of that now. We've got to be putting him uh, in a fenced off area, so that should no longer be a concern. But one way or the other, I think it is fair to assume that even if Bobo had not been tethered, the incident would uh, have played out in mostly the same way. If anything, um, it, you know, he, he would have had more freedom to roam. So I'm not entirely sure why that really should become an issue. Now, again, I emphasize my goal is not here. Keeping it again very clear that he did not want to file a complaint. I think the complaint was filed on his behalf. Subsequent to that, he again. Uh, submitted a statement, again to the contrary, and again indicating he did not believe that he was attacked and that he did not want to file a complaint. I leave the board with that. I think it's very clear what Mr. Michael Nyadak's position is on this subject. Now, any, uh, I, th I, th I, th I think I've said enough. Anybody have any questions for me? I'm, I'm happy to describe or anything I'm able to describe. Nathaniel, uh, a, couple, a couple questions. Um, first question I have is: Is have you seen the pictures that were provided of the attack, of the of the damage that the victim's daughter pr provided? Have you been made aware of those pictures? And I have seen no photos. You have, yes. Yes, I have. Okay, and would you consider what you see in those photos to be consistent with an accidental scrape? I can, I can only go by what Mr. Uh, Mr. Snydak told me. You know, again, I'm not a medical person. You know, I have looked at those photos. It does appear to me that these are not bite marks. They do appear to be scratches. There does appear to be a, uh, a linear gash on several uh, areas, and they do appear to be uh, isolated in location, meaning that uh, it, it does appear that he was injured in one specific area, which doesn't lead me to believe that it was probably a scratch, or maybe it was a tearing from when he was pushed away after he had uh, put him up on the side of that. Okay, my next question is, um, are, you, are you saying that from your perspective, your mother has not provided Michael with free access to her property and has not, does not have a, a arrangement with him that he is allowed to come on the property? Is that your testimony? Mr. Steinbeck had never come onto our property uninvited. He never comes onto our property when he knows that Ms. Uh, Ms. Law, my mother, is not present. And I think that's something he can testify to as well. Okay, and one last question. Um, the affidavit that we have here in front of us, this is something you drafted, is that correct? Yes, I was, I was drafted uh, based on uh, Mr. Steinbeck on account of the uh, internet. Okay. And again, I do want to emphasize that uh, the initial draft I provided had some inaccuracy that Mr. Sadak actually came to us to, uh, to correct those inaccuracies. Do you guys have anything you want to ask? Craig, do you have any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, no questions. All right. Well, uh, I, 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 I don't want to take over your uh, hearing, obviously. I won't allow you to run it the way you want to run it. I think it would be helpful. Uh, I, as you can see, there are a number of callers into this call. Uh, these are acquaintances. I'm sure they, uh, they're, they're here in support of Lomo. I'd like to obviously give them the opportunity, if necessary, to speak. I think it might be helpful to first, obviously, start with my mother. Uh, I would like, her, like to let her talk about Lomo a little bit. He can tell us, you know, uh, her interactions with Mr. Snyder following the internet, including the drafting of the statement. And then I would also like to allow my brother, who again uh, interact with Lomo on a frequent basis, uh, to tell us his own experiences. And then uh, I would like to put off all that his friend Peter Is that all right with the boy? Okay, is there anyone else that would like to uh, 
Howard, and are you uh, are you all set then? Uh, so I, I, I personally have had nothing further to say. Thank so you, Howard. If possible, if possible, I would like to turn it over to my mother. Okay. Um. Yes, uh, I'm here. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, can can I be. Yes. Oh. Can, my can, name is Shenzhen Luo. Can Can you just yeah? I I just need your your name, and then I I need to swear you in. Okay. Hmm? Does she need to turn the video on to be sworn in? No. No. Okay. okay. So, can you uh, please state your name? Xun Fen Luo, L-U-O, last name. Okay. And and do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing this evening? Yes. I Thank do. you. Okay. So, um, I got Lobo when he was a puppy, and uh, as a puppy, he went through. I, I he went through some uh, difficult time. Uh, he did uh, run outside the gate, uh, the property, and so because of that, I began to set up the uh, all everything I can do. I <coughs> set up. I brought the entire property. Uh, with chaining with wire and use and put on the invisible fence. I hire the trainer for the private lesson, and also uh, at the time even I need to go to work, and so that's why I did not know the law. So I I still uh, did not want him to run around when I was at, outside uh, at work. So I uh, tied him up. But now I knew the law is not allowed. I actually put him in my uh, uh, the corridor, and I brought him inside the corridor, making an extra gate. So um, Lobo become a real mature, and he's now he's 15, 16 months old, considering still a puppy, but he is really become a dog that like I enjoy very much. Uh, during the night, he sleep in the sun room. He did not bark. I I hear my neighbor's dog bark more than him. The barking didn't, uh, doesn't bother me. Robert bark when those coyote howling, that's when he bark. So uh, that's something I want to address. As for my uh, relationship with uh, Michael, we are very good friends. And uh, Michael and I, Michael come to my house uh, almost every one or two weekends. Uh, we would sit down and have a beer. Um, I actually, I go to his house. I do have an egg, and I give him the egg uh, almost daily, uh, weekly basis. I never enter his house. I always live it outside. Um, so, Michael, I when I go to work, I did not know Michael would come. Michael did not. Michael didn't give me his cell phone, so I never know when he will come to my house or not. I did not know he ever come, but I did okay once or twice. I see the uh, egg, egg container, he, because I give him an egg and he sometimes he will return it, put it into my uh, driveway. So I think that's when he came into my house. I really did not know that day he was going to bring the, uh, the bomb uh, to the dog. Michael stated to me many times that it is his own fault. He kept saying that uh, it's his fault, it's not Robo's fault. I, 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 I don't know why he said that because I really do not know what's going on that day. He kept saying it's not, it's, it's not Robo's fault, it's his fault. As for the statement, uh, my son draw it and then uh, I gave it to Michael three days 
live in his house for three days. I said, uh, read through it and you decide if you want to sign it or if anything inaccurate. Uh, three days later, he actually came to my house and we sit down and he told me uh, to take down the, uh, that he has a kabasa in, in his hand or something. He want me to take down that part uh, and take out that part because I don't know why. Anyway, I just take it out and later he signed it. So I want uh, uh, Paul to know that Paul, you said uh, your father come to my house every two days. It's not true. Uh, it's actually only during the weekend when I was there. So uh, I just want you to know that Dogo is really a good dog. And as an owner, I do everything I could. Uh, and I'm going to continue to do it. I actually keep asking for the, uh, the trainer to come back. And Dogo has not get out of that gate for almost uh, more than a half year until the trainer say he is ready to get out. And he is very present to walk, walk, to walk by, uh, to take a walk. And when he walk, like I said, he passed Janet's dog uh, uh, a few times. He never bothered Janet's dog, he never charged. Uh, so I, I just hope that people can look into that side. Thank you. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you. Uh, questions? Nathaniel? Yes. Um, your son recently um, identified the dog as being 88 pounds. Would you consider that to be accurate? Yes. We just saw uh, the vet, a uh, South Steel Field vet. He is actually only 88 pounds. And also, for your information, he, does, he just received a three years ready shot. And also, in the vet, those uh, vet technician and the vet kept saying he's such a gentle dog, very good dog for his size, really sweet, really gentle. And I'm saying this uh, under the oath. Okay, the next question is then, um, you don't have to tell me exactly how much we weigh, but would you say, say it's safe to assume that your weight is close to that of the dogs? I weighed 115. Okay. Um, and is it your testimony that when you take your dog out for a walk, you have complete control over that dog? Yes, I do. Uh, the trainer told me how to do it. Uh, and so he had this, uh, anyway, trainer gave me that kind of, uh, uh, the, the leash. Uh, usually when I took the dog for a walk, usually we walk for hours and there's never a problem. Uh, a lot of neighbors will pass us and say, why well, are you going go for a long walk? I, I don't see any problems with that. And, I, and also, I'm walking, so I usually only walk a dog during the weekends. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Greg, you have any questions? Yes, uh, thank you for your Mr. Chair. Um, uh, good evening, ma'am. Again, my name is Greg Corbo, I'm an uh, attorney for the town. I, I guess I just want to start by asking if you've seen the, the photos of Mr. Snydak's injuries? Yes, I see all the blood, yes. Yeah. And um, are, are those photos consistent with a, what you would consider to be a gentle interaction? Well, you know, I, because because uh, the reason that's why I don't think uh, we put it in there and that particular uh, uh, writing never come up by uh, Michael. Michael. Michael was sitting down in my kitchen going through the entire thing. He never said that was a mistake. That was not accurate. He did have a condition that if there is a certain car, it will breed a lot. Um, Michael, I told you Michael often come to my house uh, to drink all the, over the weekends we were in the kitchen and sometimes he will have a tiny, tiny scratch. I don't know how he get it, but really tiny cut and he will pick it and then the bra will go all over and I will help him uh, clean the, the bra and I always say to him that 
how come he uh, breathes so much? And then he said, well, he, he, he is old. What do you think? I'm an old man. My skin is like paper. So one tiny, tiny car, I can use a bandaid to put it on there. It can breathe a lot. So um, so that's why I, I know Michael has that condition. And I, uh, so we put it down in there, and Michael never disputed it. Michael agreed. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, that that's what I want to say. Okay, I've got, I've got, uh, okay. Can I, Greg, can I hop in for a second, please? Just to clarify, what you're saying is that you believe there exists a medical condition that would cause the injuries that we see in these pictures to uh, to happen based on a non life threatening injury. Is that what you're saying? Yes, because he tend to breathe a lot. Even a tiny tiny paper cut, they will breathe uh, so much. I will have to use the the a lot of paper towel to stop it. And that car can be just a tiny cut or a bandage. And you are aware there's a difference between a, a tiny cut bleeding profusely and giant gaping wounds across people's I, no, face and arms. No, that's not. I don't know, but I, I just, I just know that uh, any, any, any cut, big cut or small cut, uh, Michael would breathe a lot. And and of course, I only see. I did not. I'm not a medical doctor. I did not really see how how deep or anything. I just see a whole bunch of blood. But which is not surprised to me because over this over all these years I have seen it that he breathed. So Greg, you had additional questions? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so um, it's so it's your position then that um, this incident is really Mr. Sidak's fault. No, I did not say that. Uh, I don't, he heard, I'm, I feel very bad. He's my friend uh, and, and, and he's a good man. Just like, just like I do not want it to make it into, it's a, Robo is an aggressive dog, it's a dangerous dog because I know Robo, he is not. Uh, I will be more concerned if Robo is a dangerous dog. I would know that uh, because then, then I will have all kind of responsibility. I would not try to defend him or, or keep him. Um, it's just like we don't know what happened that day, and 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 Michael came in with the 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 smell of the kabasa uh, with the bone and and Lobo is just a, a puppy and would jump up and really excited and 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 Michael happened to have that condition so um, I just want the board to see that I do everything uh, I can to uh, to be a responsible owner with the way I did with my property, the way I train Lobo, and and the the way I anyway everything I do. So uh, I'm just here to pray for uh, for my time with Lobo. Thank you. And so if um, you believe that that Lobo was such a gentle dog and not a danger to anyone, why did you put the beware of dog sign on the fence? I think that's uh, all the dog owner need to do. It, because if you have a dog inside, no matter what you need to do it, isn't that? And especially with dog that kind of size, especially he's a puppy, he's a playful puppy. Can I ask a follow-up <laughs> question? I thought that is not because I think he's going to hurt people. I just want people to know that it's a dog inside. There's a sign like that everywhere. That's why I put it in. Can I ask a follow-up question, Greg? So it's your, it's your testimony then that the sign itself is common knowledge, that that sign does not actually indicate a dangerous dog, but just indicates a dog is in, in the premises? Would that be your Yes. Certain? Yes. And I also uh, ask my uh, knowledge to be in this country for this long. I know... Uh, your property, you cannot, people's property, you cannot just walk in, it's no trespassing, so I already have a gate. So I 
and and also deliver people is always putting things outside. Even people walking, robot is tied up. At that time, robot is tied up. Now he is inside the entire uh, cage, entire fence. So uh, I just would not imagine these things would happen. My only fear is that he would he would run out, uh, run out to to the street. So that's why I have an invisible fence. I have a gate. I have a wire fence, and I also even tie him up. Um, so, so I, I just do everything I can to be responsible. Okay, thank you very much, Greg. Do you have any other questions? Um, yes, uh, three, and Mr. Chair, thank you. And so, I, can you tell the board specifically what you intend to do um, to ensure that this does not happen again? Well. Uh, Again, I when the winter, when the summer, uh, spring comes, when I can walk on the ground, I right now I have all the fence, but I'm going to uh, how do you say it? make it stronger. But uh, at the least for all these years since uh, this time for more than a half year, those were never never run out those uh, never try to uh, temper those fence, never try to run out the property, never once. Even with Coyote was howling, he was barking uh, in, 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 in my sunroom, he never, never go out to chase those coyotes. So, and then now when I go to work, I think that, that day somebody deliver a notice to my dog, right? I don't know who delivered it. But I, at the time I was at work too. You used to see that that person, she see Robo is not outside in the leash anymore. Instead, Robo is in my, uh, from the sunroom. My house has a three side uh, corridor. It's called deck. Uh, and those deck has the uh, deck railing. On top of deck railing, I put up even more wiring. So, that person, whoever delivered that person, uh, can see that there is no way when I was out, no robot can get out. And now, uh, also, because I have a chicken and, and geese, everything, um, when I'm outside all the time, when I'm outside, when robot is outside, I am outside. When I am in, uh, robot is in that corridor in, on the deck. So, uh, I, because these things happen, so I now I keep really, really close uh, eyes on Robo. Robo never out of my sight without each, uh, any at, at all. And I just don't know what else I can do. If you can give me a suggestion, I will do it. But even a trainer is saying that Robo is going to be become a very mature dog. And very soon he is going to be neutered. Uh, I'm waiting for the right time because he's still a puppy, and I want to. Uh, the vet suggests to wait a little bit, and he will come even come down more. Howard, you have to some. You want to add something, Howard? Uh, yes. No, I just uh, just in the interest of time, uh, I'm sure I'm sure you can tell. Uh, English is not my mother's first language. I'm happy to answer any technical questions, for example, regarding the fence, things of that sort. Perhaps that might help me think along a little bit more quickly. I know, English is mom, because I'm not. Eddie's gonna hit some music Eddie, you got a hand up, Eddie? That's enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been looking at that going, there's a hand raised. <laughs> wow. Okay, Greg, you got any more questions? Um, I, I guess to, um, uh, to Mr. Sai, um, if he has anything to add as to what um, they intend to do to prevent this from happening again in the future, I think that would be useful for the board. Well, I have some. So, I have some uh, ideas. I, I, I have. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I have discussed uh, some of the things that were already in place. The other thing that you may want uh, may want to know is now we actually we did already have this at the time. The whole tied out in front because again we do want to give them a little bit of. 
a little bit of freedom, but we actually have a pen erected around the front deck. So uh, it's a little bit difficult to see in the photo, but uh, you, you'll see there is a deck that runs all the way around the house, and that's completely blocked off the same thing spent. Now, we're, we're currently, uh, my mother mentioned it as well, but we're currently working on a project to perhaps expand that fence a little bit more so that uh, she can stay there full time. So, and again, that is going to be accessible only to the house. So, uh, in the event that the front gate was not enough, that the long driveway was not enough, that the fact that he's clearly lying in front of the door uh, is not enough, uh, now anybody in the future, if they want to approach the hall, is going to have to open the front door, go through the house, and go off the back door. So, uh, I don't think there's going to be any concern if people are doing that on a regular basis. I might have other concerns not related to the hall. Thank you, Howard. <coughs> How big is that fenced-in area? The pen? Yeah, so, so we are, we are working on we'll uh, adding an additional pen we'll inside the fence that we already have and inside the electric uh, the electric boundary and inside the gate. So uh, we're, we're talking about the fence, four layers. Uh, that fence, uh, I actually made your order a uh, chaining fence. It's at the distance 300 feet. Okay. All right. Is yeah, there, so is so there, be a pretty long time. is there anyone else that would like to uh, offer testimony from the dog on, uh, dog owner's uh, perspective? So we, so we have a few other individuals who are still on this call. Uh, they've all been very patient. I do appreciate their support. Uh, I think, uh, I, I think the best thing to do is uh, I would like to give, like to give my brother a chance to speak. I think you would like to tell us a little bit about uh, Lobo's behavior, just to reinforce that this is not uh, a unique observation. It's not simply because uh, we are his owners that we feel this way about him. I think, I think many people would have to agree on this. So, um, so uh, Eddie, maybe you would like to chime in? Are you still here? Yes, I'm here. This is Eddie. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna have to do is I'll have you state your name, Eddie. And then uh, when you state your name, I will uh, read you uh, to swear you in, okay? Edward Tsai. Edward, uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, during the hearing this evening? I do. Thank you, Edward. Yeah, so um, just want to <coughs> emphasize, uh, so regarding the <coughs> you wear of dog, um, you know, I, I, a lot of what my mom was saying, uh, but just want to emphasize, you know, a lot of it is just because, you know, he is a, just a relatively large dog, you know, and we realize he's just a puppy, um, and he just, you know, gets excited to see people. So it, it really is just taking the proper precautions, just in case. Um, but kind of besides that, you know, um, really, you know, I, so personally, I, you know, I've never seen Lobo act in really any aggressive way at all. You know, he's always just been extremely friendly to everyone he meets. Um, I, you know, I, I would say I've had multiple guests come over and meet him. Um, you know, a lot of times meeting him for the first time, and he's only really been excited or friendly towards them. Like, I, I've never seen him try to bite anyone or show any signs of just being a mean dog or an aggressive dog. So, that, that's really all I have to say about that. Um, you know, really, you know, we, we've owned another dog, um, passed away for, what, like, uh, we've owned them for 15 or 16 years, you know. I, I know for a fact, like, my mom is, um, you know, she, she knows how to own dogs and kind of be a proper owner to them. And really, in, in my um, opinion, you know, I, I have no concerns at all over what we're moving forward. Thank you, Eddie. Okay, is there any any other testimony? Greg, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Howard? Uh, no, thank you. Anybody else? I just, wanted to, I just wanted to say that I forgot that I had a discharge paper from the hospital saying that it was a dog bite, it wasn't a dog scratch. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to see it. All right, you can, uh, you can give that to, the information to Jeff. We'll take okay. that. Okay, without, without hearing any more testimony, 
Greg, I think I can uh, close the hearing right now. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, what I, I suggest is that you, you close the evidentiary portion of the hearing. Yep. Um, but that you stay in public hearing and you enter your uh, deliberation and decision phase. That's where we're going. So, at this time, I'd like to, uh, without hearing additional, we will close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and we will enter into uh, deliberations. When we enter into deliberations, um, Greg may need to help. I'm not, I mean, we don't do this every day, but our first job is to determine if the dog is a, uh, a nuisance dog, if the dog is a nuisance dog or a dangerous dog. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Mr. Chair. So you'll, you'll first decide on that question. And then if you decide that the dog is a nuisance dog or a dangerous dog, then your second question would be um, what remedy um, should be imposed to address the nuisance or danger. Okay. All right, so now it's, it's up, up to us for to, uh, deliberations. All right, so I do have a question about that. Is it, can it only be dangerous or nuisance or can it be both? So, um, there's nothing in here that prevents you from finding that a dog is both um, a nuisance and dangerous. Um, in my experience, it's typically one or the other, and um, you know, dangerous usually subsumes a finding of nuisance. However, you know, there has been testimony in this case that um, might indicate that that the dog is um, could be considered both a nuisance and dangerous. Both because of its um, its its behavior, um, this in particular incident, as well as other complaints about um, noise and the dog running loose and things like that, are, are more of the nuisance variety. I uh, guess, Greg, hi. If I may uh, chime in with respect to that, may I ask that any consideration of uh, the topic of barking or running loose, uh, which were not. Uh, previously noticed, I just thought that for this hearing be excluded from consideration. What's your thoughts, Greg? Uh, well, certainly that's, that's something within your discretion, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, there, there was notice provided that this was a hearing to determine whether or not the dog was a nuisance or a dangerous dog. It's a public hearing. Um, you have every right to consider the, the evidence and the testimony that was given. Um, and you're, you're under no obligation to consider only the incident that was in the, um, the notice. And in fact, I, I don't have the notice in front of me, but I, I would expect that it had language that said um, including but not limited to the, the incident that occurred on this particular date. So what, what I'll do is I, I just so everybody in the audience knows I'll read the definitions that, that govern our decisions, okay? So, so we're, there's, a, there's a couple uh, important definitions. One is attack. Attack is defined for our, our discussion this evening is an aggressive physical contact initiated by an animal. Dangerous dog is a dog that either one, without justification, attacks a person or domestic animal causing physical injury or death or two behaves in a manner that a reasonable person would believe poses an unjustified imminent threat of physical injury or death to a person or to a domestic or owned animal that's the definition of a dangerous dog that we're looking at this evening nuisance dog a nuisance dog is a dog that, one, by excessive barking or by other disturbance, is a source of annoyance to a sick person residing in the vicinity, or two, by excessive barking causing damage or other interference, a reasonable person would find such behavior disruptive to one's quiet and peaceful enjoyment, or three, has threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal, or person, but such a threat or attack was not a grossly disappropriate reaction under the circumstances. So that's what, that, those are the definitions that we're looking at, that we have to define. Conversation. 
So I believe we've heard plenty of nuisance complaints. <coughs> I believe we have heard people state that they were fearful because the dog they felt was aggressive towards neighbors and their animals, which again is part of the definition of that. You know, when people have to pick up their dog because that dog is in their, you know, on their property, I feel. Uh, ma it, it, if, if I may interject, and I'm sorry, I did not have the opportunity to do so, but uh, if, if we are going to be considering uh, evidence with respect to the, the question of parking, uh, there is additional evidence that we would like to consider. So I would like the opportunity to do that if possible. Howard, at this time, our, our evidentiary portion of the hearing is closed. I was, under, I, was under the under, I was under the impression that uh, we were moving on from the topic of parking because of the focus of this complaint was the incident that occurred on October 25th and that the parking was not to be included in the hearing. Now, if, if, if we are going to be imposing a penalty, uh, or there is a possibility of imposing a penalty on the dog, uh, I would like to have the, have the opportunity to present all the evidence. In, in, in my opinion, when, once we close, and I've always been taught, you know, once we close the evidentiary portion of a hearing, we don't re, we just don't reopen it. I think we had we had the we had the ability to uh, discuss it fully. You you talked about on both parties talked about barking if there was barking or whatever. Um, in, in my opinion, the the barking is the barking may or may not be. I understand that some people think it is Lobo, some people t think it's not Lobo. Um, I, I think for me, I still go back to, the, is a dog a nuisance dog or a dangerous dog? I, I think my decision won't be made on the complaints about barking because that's, that's a subjective, in my opinion, what's been talked about right now is subjective. Um, so I'm not basing my decision based on barking alone. And I don't think any of the board members are. I can say that I don't think that the, whether or not we include the barking is a huge factor for me in making my decision on this. Right. So, I mean, that, that was testimony that was given that we, um, in, both, in both parties, had an opportunity, had an opportunity to um, discuss that in nauseam about if it was or didn't happen. So I, I, I think right now, don't forget at the end of this at the end of this conversation you have the ability to appeal our decision that's made here also so okay. well in that case so uh, i would like to end a minimum i would like to state for the record that there is video evidence of other dog barking that uh, it has been provided to apl martin in the yeah. past and i think that's something that your mom shared with us also howard uh, I thank you thank you howard I, i'd like to say i mean i i'm i'm willing to take on good faith that that does exist. I'm not sure that changes anything. I, I again, I, 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 I think that the most important thing is that we're, we're looking at is a dog a dangerous dog or a nuisance dog? Now, so, so you have to ask yourself that the information that we discussed this evening, did, he, did, did, that, did that dog search out that person and viciously attack that person? That 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 ha that that's one of that's that's one of the things. Yep. Mr. Chair. Yes, Chair. Um, if if I could just to um further elaborate on on the definition um, for members of the board. So, um, the the definition read by the chair is in Chapter One Forty, Section One Thirty Six A. Um, however, in Section 157 of that statute, there are certain circumstances where a dog would be, could not be considered dangerous. Um, and those circumstances are um, if the incident is based solely upon growling or barking, um, or solely growling and barking, two, based on the breed of the dog, um, or three, if the, the dog was reacting to another animal or to a person 
and the dog's reaction was not grossly disproportionate in any of the following circumstances. One, the dog was protecting or defending itself, its offspring, another domestic animal or a person from attack or assault. Two, the person who was attacked or threatened by the dog was committing a crime upon the person or property of the owner. Three, the person attacked or threatened by the dog was engaged in teasing, tormenting, battering, assaulting, injuring, or otherwise provoking the dog. Or four, at the time of the attack or threat, the person that was attacked by the dog had breached an enclosure or structure in which the dog was kept apart from the public and such person or animal was not authorized by the owner of the premises to be within such enclosure. Um, so, um, I mean, in terms of, of this being a, a dangerous dog, you know, based on the, the testimony that you've heard, um, it's clear that there was an attack here. Um, while, while there may be some um, variations of, of how this incident was described, um, it, it appears undisputed that um, that the gentleman en entered the gate um, with the intention of, of feeding the animal, that he was not threatening it in any way, um, and that the dog um, jumped on him and bit him, causing serious injury. Now, whether or not he, he may have been more prone to bleeding than, than some other people, or or whether his, his skin might have punctured easier, um, th those pictures um, show a very serious um, attack um, and a, a very deep um, injury to this person. Um, so in, in my opinion, based on the wording of the statute, um, the, the label of, of dangerous dog um, would apply, um, provided that you find that um, the, the gentleman was authorized to enter the enclosure at the time that he entered. Now, if you were to find that the dog is not a dangerous dog, but that um, this incident was nonetheless serious enough to warrant um, further precautions being taken here, um, then it is my opinion that, that the dog would still fit within the definition of nuisance dog, um, particularly um, the part that says has threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal or person, but such threat or attack was not grossly disproportionate under the circumstances. So, you know, the difference between um, a dangerous dog and a nuisance dog when it comes to an attack is, is a matter of degree. Um, and, you know, you could find that an, an incident may not be serious enough or harmful enough to have risen to the level of being dangerous, but yet still be a nuisance um, for purposes of having to take additional precautions to protect the public. Thank you, Greg. If I may, I, 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 I do appreciate your willingness to uh, debate, to, to, to deliberate. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll just factors, jump, but... jump in for a moment, please. Um, th this really isn't a debate at this point. Um, You've closed the evidentiary portion of the hearing. Um, I'm here to provide you with advice, but um, my suggestion is that you not take any further um, argument or um, evidence at this time and that the board um, simply complete its deliberations. Um, Mr. Mr. Corbo, I, I do insist that I, I, I must state that the label of attack is a legal conclusion. It does require an aggressive physical contact, which is a matter of deliberation for the board, and I do ask that uh, we emphasize that again, it's not a given conclusion that it was an attack and that it was aggressive in nature. Thank and you, Howard. We but we're, we're going to continue. How we're going to continue our deliberations right now, okay? And and, and like I said, if you you can agree or disagree with what we're we're about to to decide, and you do have if if you don't agree, there you do have other options available. But if you would, could you let us deliberate? Okay, what's your thoughts? Um, from my perspective, the attack was a vicious attack. I don't think that anyone on this board would disagree with me on that. Um, we've seen the pictures. The, I believe the, the, the victim's daughter in that if it had been in a half an inch in either direction on either arm, the owner might have come home to a dead body in her, in her front lawn. Um, 
this was not a a whoops the dog's tooth caught his arm kind of situation this was a vicious attack by a dog that is my opinion on the on the situation i agree and unfortunately from hearing some of the other neighbors I believe there's potential for it to happen again. In 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 my what what, what I hear um, is that I think Mr. Sayek was very lucky, um, and and I personally believe that the the dog. Um, Needs there was a couple there was a couple problems. One, I do not believe the dog was properly restrained. Um, I think the dog the dog if whatever we do if we decide that the dog needs to be uh, restrained in such a manner that it is not allowed, um, someone just could arbitrarily enter a Amazon delivery guy person. Walk in the yard and have a have a diff, have something happen. So I think when in in particular when when there's no one home, the dog the the dog needs to be uh, securely restrained and in a in a in a location that would prevent the dog from getting out, but all but allowing for the dog to have um, water, food, um, and the things that it needs to comply with our ma present Massachusetts. Uh, laws that are in place. Um, I also believe, I, I would suggest that the present, I believe the dog, it's a male dog that's intact. I would, I would, I would say that the dog be um, um, medically treated, um, that they, they, it would be altered so it would be unable um, to reproduce. I think that, that would, that would help. That's something that we can that we can do, and I also think if the dog was to if if the dog to go out in public, it would have to be muzzled at all times. I agree with the muzzle because I, I I have a seventy pound dog. I don't let my kids walk it because it, the dog can pull away from them and they don't have control over it. I do not believe that the owner of the dog has the physical capacity to be able to restrain a dog of a similar weight to her if that dog decides to get away. Dogs are just a lot stronger pound for pound than humans are in terms of pulling away from you. I don't believe without a muzzle that it's safe for that dog to be walked in the neighborhood. So Greg, our, our, as, as our counsel, are those things that we can, we can put in our decision? Sorry, uh, yes, those, those are things that, that can be put in your decision. I mean, um, you know, once, assuming that you find that the dog is a dangerous dog, um, you know, th that does not necessarily mean that, that the dog um, is required to be euthanized. <coughs> Rather, um, there, there's actually a, a series of, of options for restraint of the dog um, that you may issue in lieu of euthanization. And so uh, my suggestion is that um, you, you should complete your deliberations on the question of nuisance or dangerous dog. And then um, if you make such a finding, I can um, make a suggestion based on the deliberations that I've heard so far. Thank you. I, I know I'm ready to, to vote on whether they're dangerous or not. All right, so, so let me give it, it so we're, I, I believe we're looking at a dangerous dog. Um, the motion I would entertain is I, I move based on the following facts at, at, the, at the public hearing, including but not limited to that find that the dog is uh, complained of its as a uh, dangerous dog by reason of the uh, definitions that we have above, of the dangerous dog definition. We go back up there. All right, so I motion that we <coughs> declare this as a dangerous dog for um, 
the, the testimony from the witnesses we heard today. And what else do we want here in that motion? Yeah, Based it, on the facts of this public hearing. Seconded. Now, the discussion, point of discussion. Yeah. Greg, I, I don't want to see the dog. You, I don't think anybody wants, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I don't want to see the dog euthanized at this point. Um, I... I mean, I have, I have not. I mean, what, what it was a, it was a, a, a tragic, a tragic thing to happen, Mr. Stadek. But I, I a, a, by Mr. Stadek not being here, that that kind of tells me what his his thoughts are. Right, and you know, he he stated he would like, you know, in the statement we have that he would like to see the dog rehomed or something similar to that. Yeah, um, we, we don't have the option though. Right. We, we used to have we, that option. They used to give us the option to ban the dog from town. I always thought it was kind of a easy way out. We'll just say the dog can't be in Sunderland anymore. It goes over Deerfield. Um, then you have no choice but to rehome it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah but but that, that's not, we, we've never done that. Um, so I don't want to see euthanasia. I, I just don't. Um, are we so, going to vote on the motion? Mr. Chair, I, yes, I think there's a, a, a motion on the table there to is. find that the dog is a, is a dangerous dog, correct? That's correct. Is there a second on that motion? Yeah, yes, we, have a, we have a second on that, yes, correct. Okay, so, so my suggestion is that you take a vote on that motion, and then if, if that motion passes, um, as I said, I, I have some suggestions that um, that I can put out there for, for further discussion um, and possibly a vote by the board. Okay. Fine. All right, that motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, three zero. Opposed? Nobody. Jeff, three zero. All right, Greg, what do you want to do now? Okay, so having found that, that the dog is, is a dangerous dog, the, the next step is to determine you know, what, what remedy is necessary um, to protect the public from the danger? And, and as I said, ordering that the dog be euthanized is, is one, um, you know, extreme um, version of that, which certainly ensures that this can never happen again, um, but is not the only thing. Um, one thing that, as you correctly pointed out, Mr. Chair, that, that is not in front of you is the ability to um, require that the dog be rehomed or um, put out to, to another town. That is something that is specifically prohibited. Um, however, there are a number of things that, that you are able to do, um, and a, a number of those I think would be particularly appropriate in this situation. And what we have to bear in mind is that you know, the, the situation that occurred here um, occurred while someone was, was visiting the property, um, you know, so that while the dog was, was behind a fence, um, the dog was in an area in which a visitor might be expected to occur. The dog had access to, to the driveway, the dog had access to the, um, to the front um, door. It, it, it is also apparent that the dog is left outside for long periods of time um, without being attended to by any adult or other person, which likely um, exacerbated the, the issue here. Um, you heard testimony that is disputed, but there's testimony nonetheless of the, the dog barking um, late at night, um, the, the dog having gotten loose during, during prior um, occasions. And, and so it all appears that there's a running theme here of, of the dog not being properly supervised um, while its owner is not at home. And so um, I have a, a, a series of suggestions that might um, better address those issues. And, and some of those are actually, it seems like have been started to be implemented already. So first of all, I suggest that um, the board order that the dog be confined to the premises of the owner in a securely enclosed and locked pen or dog run area on the property anytime it is outdoors. Said pen to be in an area that is not accessible um, to the driveway 
or the front door. Um, it would appear that, that the pen that's being described um, on the deck to the property might already satisfy that requirement. Um, secondly, I would suggest that the order include a requirement that the dog not be kept outdoors unattended unless the owner or another responsible adult is present at the property. Um, third, I suggest that the dog not be allowed to be tethered to an inanimate object um, outdoors for more than five hours in any 24 hour period. Four, that the dog not be allowed outdoors between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. the following day. Um, number five, that if the dog is removed from the premises of the owner, um, that it be kept on a leash um, held by a person um, capable of restraining the dog and that it be muzzled. And finally, um, that the dog be um, fixed by a veterinarian. That all sounds like. Wait, I you know, I I don't have a problem with any of those. I, I don't I, have a problem with any of it. Either. Yep, I I would I would vote on that. Um, do we put a time period around this to comply by? Um, yes. What What do you think is? I mean, the only thing that really would require time. Um, would be um, establishment of the, the pen area and having the, the dog fixed. Um, right. So I, I would suggest putting a, a reasonable time frame on that. And um, I would suggest having the pen um, be subject to approval of the animal control officer. Well, otherwise, I would say effective immediately for the other. Yeah. The other so guys. the neuter and the pen, give them 90 days to comply I mean I don't know how easy it is to get into a vet appointment these days um, but I, I believe that no outside the muzzle how about proof of a vet appointment being scheduled within 30 even if that vet appointment is further out because of scheduling concerns we have proof that this is that the step has been taken to set that appointment up and then further follow-up proof that it had that that date that they set in that time period was held and that the <laughs> Neutering went ahead at that time. Got it. Got it. Oh, may I have the opportunity to uh, to uh, offer my input into the deliberative process, given that it is uh, our dog? Go ahead, Howard. But but uh, go ahead. All right. So with respect to the neutering, again, uh, I do, I do want to emphasize that it is something that was already on the table. We had already discussed it with the vet. And the vet did recommend that we not uh, do so immediately. So I asked that with respect to the date of the neutering, that uh, you, do, you defer to the vet as to exactly when that could be. So, right, so, so, so Howard, Howard, what you would have to do if the vet, the vet doesn't think that it's there, we need to have medical proof. We need a letter from the vet specifically giving us reason, and we will take it to our vet to, uh, to check the validity of that. How's that? That's fine. Uh, second, yeah, and, um, to just to clarify, if I could just be heard on that before you move on, um, what the statute requires is that to um, avoid the requirement of being fixed, the veterinarian has to certify that the dog is unfit for alterations because of a medical condition. Yep. Um, I know um, a, a lot of veterinarians will, you know, suggest that male dogs not be. Um, fixed right away um, so that they kind of hold on to their maleness longer. Maybe the ACO can describe that better than me, but um, that does not necessarily mean that there is a medical condition 
um, preventing them from being yeah, vexed. Uh, yeah, tip, typically, typically vets will tell you they used to do it at six months. Now they're telling you let them go to about a year, year and a half before they're. By, I'm very well. I've had. Well, probably 15 at my house at one time, so I'm pretty familiar with dogs. And I think if we were talking about like a, a six-week-old <coughs> puppy or an eight-week-old puppy right now, that'd be a different it, it situation. Used, this is a year and a half old dog that's well within. They the used to neuter males at six months. Now, six now they're pushing nine. it out to. Now they're pushing out to at at least one year of age. So, I I would say that you, what you said, Greg, is exactly right. Uh, so, and and specific. Howard specifically what we're going to write down in the, the thing the dog to be altered so it is unable to reproduce unless its owner or keeper provides evidence that a veterinarian is of the opinion that doubt is unfit for alterations because of a medical condition how's that Greg okay yes thank you Hi, I want to appreciate it if you were to give us uh, some time to work on that. Like I said, uh, we, we do need to reach out to the vet, and again, the vet may want to uh, give you a little bit of time with development. So I ask that you give us at least a uh, few months in that regard. Mm -hmm. I say 30 uh, days. 30 days is plenty of, well, my opinion is 30 days is plenty of time to reach out to a vet. It's time to reach out to a vet, but I don't know how long going to take one appointment or how long the vet is going to recommend that we wait before we do that. I, I think I think what uh, I think what uh, Nathaniel said is that you, within 30 days we uh, we want a uh, uh, an appointment for the uh, thing to be done for the uh, procedure to be done within 90 days. I think that's 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 pretty, pretty fair. I think that's that's very pretty reasonable. flexible. All right. Now, with respect to the pen, the, the other thing I wanted to bring up. Now, I, I don't know if you're aware, it's winter, the ground is already frozen. It's very difficult for us to dig. So, uh, but, and obviously, it, it's in our own interest as well to get a local, a wider uh, range of motion. So, we are going to get that in as quickly as possible. But uh, with respect to things like 90 days, that, that sort of thing, I'm not entirely sure that can be possible. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought that the, the yeah. fence was going to be on a porch that would not necessitate digging. Was I mistaken by that? Wasn't the, wasn't this on top of a deck, right? She can totally be on top of the deck, but with respect to the, uh, and I understand there was also a discussion about him not being allowed outside and to provide. What I might suggest is uh, as an incentive for us to complete the pen, that uh, the restriction be that uh, he be uh, either within the deck or within the deck area or the pen area. So whenever we're able to get the pen, uh, constructed, that would be uh, the more time the uh, sooner he's able to be free to it. So I think that would uh, that would certainly address the concern of of uh, immediately sort of thing. Thoughts on that, Greg? I mean, it would seem to me like the and, and I haven't seen this, but um, and I would defer to the animal control officer. I don't and I don't know if she's seen it either, but. It would seem to me that, that what was described earlier about the deck um, and only being accessible from the inside of the house would satisfy the requirements of a pen um, and that the dog could be kept within that area. And if, if at some later date they wish to put in a bigger pen, um, as long as that pen is located in an area that is not accessible to the driveway or the front door, I, I think that would be their option. But in the meantime, the deck area, um, as long as it is secure, um, can and should serve as, as the pen. All right, and it's in my under, it, it, if I correct in my understanding that uh, with respect to the time limit taken, it's uh, the uh, 10 a.m., sorry, the 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., that would also apply to the uh, pen area. So he is allowed to be in the pen? No. <laughs> No, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. He's not allowed outside. Uh, even even if, if the outside in question is the, is the enclosed pen area. Correct. 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 <coughs> and, and even even that is not accessible to the public. I'm not sure I understand the reason for that. What is the reasoning for uh, preventing him from being outside, even if he's already in a pen? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, you don't have to answer that at this point. I mean, it's a. It's up to you to decide whether or not you wish to to impose that as a requirement. In my opinion, 
based on the, the evidence that you heard here and testimony that you know this dog is left outside for long periods of time, including at night, um, that it is completely appropriate to require that it be kept indoors um, during the night time. And um, you know the the owner herself testified that she doesn't let the dog out unattended at night. And if that's the case, then compliance with this requirement shouldn't be any sort of issue. Agreed. Well, the, uh, if I may, the, requ the requirement would prevent him from even going out onto the deck. And uh, again, I, I do want to emphasize, it does sound to me like it is addressed at the parking, which I would enjoy with not a, uh, with, with not a consideration in this decision. Correct. Next, all right. I think that's it. I think that's it. And just that, that space needs to be so. checked. So, uh, Greg, Greg, you work with uh, Jeff right now up tomorrow and uh, get our decision out as soon as possible. Yes, yes, Thank Mr. Chair, I will. And uh, um, so, what I would suggest is that um, you take my list and, and make it into a motion and take a vote um, and authorize me and Jeff to work together to put it in writing. Do, do you want me to offer a motion and you can say? That. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. All right. uh, Jeff, what, what's your motion? <laughs> the motion would be um, that to impose the following remedies. Um, the dog is confined to the property in a pen or on a run when the owner is not home. The pen may not have access to the front door of the driveway, and it must be approved by the animal control officer. Number two, um, the dog is not to be kept outdoors unattended unless with a responsible adult on premises. Three, the dog should not be tethered to an inanimate object for more than five hours in a 24 hour period. Yep. Four, the dog is not allowed outdoors from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Five, if the dog is removed from the premises, it must be on a leash held by a person capable of controlling it and it must be muzzled. And uh, six, the dog must be altered, and um, we would like we need proof of that uh, of the appointment being set up with it. We need proof within 30 days that the appointment has been set up at some point, or a letter from the vet with the medical condition that it can. And just to add to that, and then the procedure completed within 90 days. Uh, yep. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So moved. We have a motion made. Seconded. Yeah. All those in favor? Please aye. Aye. by saying aye. Jeff, 3 0. <coughs> okay. So, Greg, if you can work with uh, Jeff tomorrow. Howard, thank you for your uh, presentation to this evening. Um, and the family, I'm sorry it happened. Uh, Emmy, thank you. Chief, thank you. And and I and I know, I, for the residents here, I know it may seem a long drawn out affair, but I but I think we ended up doing best what was for the neighborhood and for the dog and the family that owns them also. So we appreciate your coming and and participating in the thing. It's it's very important that you are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Okay. Now we get to go to our meeting, so you guys can stay if you want. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're All right. Oh. <laughs> Run, Chief, while you still can. So, uh, we can do the rest no, next time if you want. The, uh, huh? We can yeah, do the yeah, next time. It's late. Um, our next meeting is uh, Monday, December 12th, 2022. Um, I want to entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Seconded. <laughs> <laughs> motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.